This is Drink Talk, where we try to solve the world's problems one drink at a time. This week, we'll be discussing self driving cars and having no paddle IPA, bag gum IPA, and F5 IPA. We are your hosts, Brian and Britt. And our special returning guest host, Grant. <laughs> All right. That was a rough a opening. Right. Yeah, you were like, you were just standing around. I'm like, Brian, you have more to say. Oh, yeah, I know I do. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. Yeah. It's no big deal. I was, I was thinking on something and just, uh, yeah. Well, you were, what you were doing was Sorry. already thinking about self-driving cars so yeah, that you so didn't was, have to do any I was of on this. autopilot. Boom. <laughs> that's right. It wasn't working. Definitely apparently. on autopilot. It wasn't working apparently. Hey, Grant. That's me. Nice of you to join us. I'm excited. I don't think I'm a guest host. I think I'm just a guest. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, you're you're, you're a helping co-host. host. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Co guest host Something thing. Like Bob. Um, yeah. So this week we uh, we decided to do self driving cars because it's uh, something that's uh, coming up in the yeah. news and uh, they're out and about a little bit. But we're going to get into that. But the first thing that we got to do is we got to do our uh, drinks here. Yes, we oh, do. Yeah. So I've and, already got you poured out. I've got your water there, by the way. I cracked it open, so don't be worried that you, you know. Thank you. So this slipping you something. The only thing water. I screwed up, I, I was trying. It was I was uh, we made it. We're still two minutes late because of me. I didn't break the pickles. That's, that's oh. I walked no into but, a. Oh wait, wait, wait. There's, but there's this. But there's, there's bacon. bacon. There's bacon. <laughs> I walked into an establishment not a mile from here, and there was a single line, and it was eight deep, and I walked out. Nah, so. That's all right. No big deal. Say lovey. Say lovey. Say lovey. Um, this first drink that we're going to be drinking on comes to us from Keg Creek Brewing Company mm-hmm. here in, uh, well, there, there's several, uh, but yeah, there's one here in Omaha, and uh, the title of this one is called No Paddle. No Paddle. Because, you know, these are self-driving cars, so you're kind of... <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, got to tie Up it in a little bit. the S Creek, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> if you... Uh, if your car isn't acting right, can I can I see the bottle? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I kind of poured your beer without you, you you actually actually yeah, viewing a, it and all that stuff. Yeah, it's like a six point um, what was it six point five six point four ABV. Yes, a little alcohol by about on you. Hmm. Um. But with that, should yeah. we should we should cheers? we cheers? Should we we shall cheers. Shall. Does, that that way we the first we, of a few. All right. Well, this would be my second of the few, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, very Kinda smooth. Like a, almost like a cherry vibe to it, like a like a yeah. almost a little hint of a sweetness to it. Yeah, yeah. I get an apricot in there. Yeah, that maybe that's it. You turn my headphones yeah. up, but just just a hair. No so. um, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get the sweetness. Um, it's a little smoother than some of the um, the heavy IPAs that I've had before. Uh, definitely a deep amber color. Oh well, here's the sweetness. Uh, it says it's a three hopped blend. Uh, with caramel notes, oh. so there's where you get the sweetness mm-hmm. from. Yeah. Caramel, mm-hmm. caramel, caramel. Turns out I'm shorter than I thought I was. Sorry, right, go That's ahead. That's not actually. I, I've always known I'm pretty darn short. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, Grant, it was very nice of you to join us. Being as though you're in the uh, automobile insurance, uh, hmm? agency. I'm not here professionally. No, which no. is why we weren't going to mention which right. company. No, and that, that doesn't matter. But I, but I, uh, yeah, I, I'm in insurance, and and that'll be a topic because, uh, yeah, it just is, you know. Yeah. But but it's interesting. There was an interesting uh, article in the the local newspaper today about all the sexual harassment stuff. And yes, no, you you could just insure that, you we're, know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I mean, I know we laugh, but. But for businesses, and that's actually something else. Oh, yeah. I, I sold yep. zero of last year, and I'm on the sales side. I'm in the sales and marketing side of this world, and we'll probably sell 30 to 50 of those next year. And that's because the market now exists, mm-hmm. and, you know, the market didn't exist. And so as we get into this one deeper, there's a new market, you mm-hmm. know, and, and uh, it's going to have some implications. And so I'm, I'm excited because yes, I've, I've, I've certainly got some education from that angle, but part of it's just figuring it out. You know, that's which is just kind of fun. Well, and that's that's uh, why I'm glad you're here because we actually have some questions, mm-hmm. yeah. specifically rating. Maybe you to. won't be able to answer them. We don't know, but yeah. we'll you know at least tackle them. Mm-hmm. We'll say you're an expert. Yes. How about that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's uh, it's out there now, so it must be true. Yeah. Well, so. you're the expert of this show. There you How go. How about that? Yeah. You you know way more about insurance than I do, so I'm going to call you an expert. So, um, getting back to this beer, uh, yeah. I'm really liking the taste of it. Keg Creek Brewing Company, huh? Yeah. Where are oh. they out of? Well, there's they do have one here in Omaha, but I mean they're kind of all over. I mean they've got one in Glenwood, Des Moines. They Omaha. call it Glenwood home. That's if you look yeah. at the bottle. 
Gotcha. Which isn't far. It's Anybody? only about 25, 30 minute okay. drive. Not far. Just south on 29. It's a stone's there. throw away. Different water, though. Yeah. I yeah. know. Uh, are you familiar? Have They're we downstream. Been, I, I, cannot, <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot tell a lie and say I've consumed every minute of drink talk. Have you guys had Patriarch Distilleries? Yes. Yeah. So the they, fir- our first it, episode, actually. Well, there you go. GMOs. i got to go back and look at that. Yeah. They, uh, they, brought in, they bring in their water. I Don't tell me. It's, yeah. I, I'm not going to say it's from Glenwood, but it's from somewhere over in Iowa. Soldier 23. Valley. Yep, there you Which go. Which is why it's called Soldier Valley Spirits. Well, there you go. See? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys, that, yeah, yeah, their bourbon is probably one of my top two or three bourbons that it's I've ever stuff. had. Ever had. It's, it's it's amazing. Yeah, highly mm. recommend those guys. And they're local, so that makes it a uh, even better for me. Um, sorry about that. Forgot my headphones. <laughs> no, it's all right. You're good. Uh, I did want. To, there's a couple things that I wanted to bring up from this uh, last week uh, and this coming week uh, before we get into the talk here. So uh, on Friday. I had the chance to go out to Nebraska Brewing Company. It was their 10th anniversary, and they had a rare beer tasting out there. Which yeah, uh, you lucky dog, you. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wanted to go. I know. So um, I had a chance to get out there and talk with uh, some of the people out there at, at Nebraska Brewing Company and some of the people that attended there. Uh, I did wear the Drink Talk shirt, so I was uh, recognized by a couple people, which was nice. nice. And they came out and said hello. And they had nine different beers, all of them barrel aged, of course, because you really, um, you, that's how you get the old ones. But the oldest was uh, 2011. And I think the newer, newest ones were like 2015, but they were all very rare beers, very high potency beers, I'm very, sure. de- very delicious beers. Well, and they were probably giving you just a sample, or were they giving you glasses? We have so they actually. I went home with a Nebraska Brewing Company glass, which is very similar to the the Vista Major glass. Gotcha. And um, they were pr- pretty much doing two or three ounce pours, so a little heavier than what you get at a uh, regular. If you go out to a beer sampling or yep. a, or a, like at Warner Park or whatever Horseman's Park or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was. Oh, but they had food and everything there too, all complimentary. And then afterwards, they had their tenth tenth uh, anniversary birthday party, which is pretty cool. And how did you get this invite? So uh, everybody got an invite. You yeah, just had to pay yeah, to go in. Yes, it. Oh. yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I had a really good talk with some of the brewers out there, a couple of the uh, the people in their marketing department. So we uh, some things to come. Hopefully, hopefully we can get them on our shoe. Yeah. Uh, all, Very nice show. Also coming up on Tuesday. Uh, do we need to sing, Britt, for your birthday? Oh, my birthday? <laughs> yeah, your birthday. Well, <laughs> first of all, we had last Tuesday was my anniversary. Mm-hmm. And this Tuesday is my birthday. So I'll never forget my anniversary because it's a week before my birthday. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Very helpful. Um, well, good, well planned. I put mine on the first of the month. <laughs> yeah, <just> <laughs> on the first of the <laughs> month. Makes it easier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which month? Oh, crap. <laughs> what am I, I going to be this year? 36? 36. Oh, Getting up there. Man. Four years away from 40. Mm, gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, yeah, this coming week, we also have Thanksgiving coming up. So yes. Um, you guys, are you Feel hosting? Are you leaving? Are you staying? Or? We're staying. We're, uh, we go about 20 minutes north of here. Uh, we'll be with 40 people. I am blessed. I am 37, so I got you by a, a bit. And uh, I have two grandparents still around. Nice. Uh, husband and wife married 71 years. Woo! And, and nice. You so, do not see that much nowadays. Uh, that is awesome. They've been winning that that, that dance that you do at the at the weddings, like mm-hmm. where it's the longest couple. They've been winning that for like 20 years. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> no, Mike. And be, yeah. Grandpa comes out for Veterans Day once a year and because uh, obviously he's a World War II veteran, as, oh, as nice. most of his peers were. And uh and they're like, and our only World War II vet. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. it is, it's classic. It's There's just awesome. There's very few it's of just them left. Awesome. Yeah. So. I think in Nebraska we have like nine Blessings left. to Kenny and Nadine. No, there's more than that. There's a Is lot there more. Really? Oh, World War II. There's a lot more than that. There, uh, That's probably the World War. No, that couldn't be the World War One number. Those yeah, World. They'd be there. There's a lot more than that. In World a, War they'd be like a hundred some. There's there's plenty of ninety year olds. Mm. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna say there's mm. anyway. Yeah, there's still more than nine. Gotcha. Okay, maybe there's a nine D. I don't know. So. Uh, I can't confirm nor deny that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Thanksgiving, what do you uh, what do we uh, what are we thankful for on Drink Talk? I am thankful from where we started to where we are now. Well, le- first of all, this is Drink Talk, so I'm thankful for alcohol and beer. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, we would not have the show. Fermentation. <laughs> Fermentation, there you go. <laughs> uh, Bacon, this is but of course, family's first, you know, family uh, and, and job security. So, 
We, uh, Brian and I happened to be together this morning, and uh, mm-hmm. we did a, our, our pastor did a unique thing. Had said texted in, and it was kind of cool because everybody texted family and health. You know, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, lots, that kind of matters to everybody. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, that was good stuff. I'm thankful for black and white folk. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, thank- <laughs> I'm thankful for IPA. Is this an IPA? Yeah. It is an, is I'm an IPA. I'm thankful for IPAs that are not overhopped. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. and this is definitely not overhopped. No. And did you notice the glass that that's in? Because that is your consolation prize for coming here. Hey. Winner. <laughs> Win- winner chicken dinner. Come on yeah. the show, get a free glass. Yeah. By the way, we've only got five left, Pardon. Brian. Do we really? Okay. Well, five plus my stash, so <laughs> maybe tw- seven. 20. <laughs> well, no, I usually keep about four or five out. Okay. You know, that way we can have a show. No, that's fine. I have four people drinking out of them. Make another order here. So. Yeah. So. Are these available on the website? Uh, no, because we don't have a website yet. Yeah. Okay. So. That's that's season two. Just contact uh, <laughs> contact the host. They're available yeah. if you come on the show. There yeah, you go. That's how you come on. Yeah, that's, that's how, you how you do it. it. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, we'll have other things when we get on the uh, the website there. Yeah. So who remembers Night Rider? That's good bacon, ain't it? <laughs> I brought the pickles last time because they crunch while I eat them. Oh yeah, yeah. bacon. <laughs> Next time Cheetos, yeah. I, I won't do that anymore. Well, I'm I'm not, a, I'm not a pickle fan, so yeah. they can just stay on that side of the table over there. So Night Rider, anybody? Night Why are we talking about Night Rider? Because he was a self-driving car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, right? that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was more of an AI personality. Driving, yeah, but he, so. he could say, Night Rider, come over here, and it, it would. Well, so. He was a Night Rider. That was Kit. Or, yeah, Kit. Yeah. You know what I mean. Night Industries 2000. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would. Yes, so I was a nerd. I loved Night Rider, man. Well, I you are the old man of the show. I am the old man of the right. show. Though they're, you know, we almost had Tom on the show. Tom would have been the old man on the show, but uh, he he had to stay home with his son and mm-hmm. study. So I'm like, kids first, drink later. Mm-hmm. So was there a way to command Kit to come to where he was at? Yeah, yeah. didn't he have like a watch or yeah. phone or something like I that? I think it was a watch. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, yeah, that's radio. Dick so Tracy. Could, yeah. And uh, and that's absolutely happening. I mean, that's that's already here with the Tesla stuff. You're like, hey, get my car out in the morning, and it like moves it around. And mm-hmm. well, yeah, oh, yeah. There you are. Have Could you order an Uber through your watch? Yeah, actually, well, there you go. I mean, there's can. there's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. So, but the uh, the one that uh, might be a little more obscure than Knight Rider for me was uh, Time Cop. Anybody remember that movie? No, was Jean yes. Claude Van Damme. Yes, I do. Okay, so in that movie, uh, I'm not gonna get into like all the specifics of it, but uh, he is a time cop because they had figured out how to do, um, you know, go through time. Um, so people were self-explanatory yeah, there, yeah. And he was in charge of enforcing people that were not using that for bad or nefarious purposes. But anyway, he had this vehicle. He'd get off work and he'd hop in this thing, and uh, it was kind of like a box where the corners were kind of angled out, like forty fives, kind of very angular looking, yeah. very small windows. But he hopped in this thing. It was like a little miniature living room in there, and he pours himself a drink and he tells the car nice. home, and mm-hmm. the car you know shuts the door and takes him home. And I'm like that. Is awesome. Is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Daddy Lucky. <laughs> yeah. So that was like my first, uh, other than Knight Rider, but Knight Rider to me, it was less of a AI and more of a personality because right. they had that banter back and forth and, and all that. So the Jetsons, did they actually drive that car or was it I just, think they did. I'm okay. pretty sure they yeah, did. Right. I, was, I don't remember. They had, they, the, did. they had the tubes that you'd go into and yeah, they had the, go around in the tubes. But. They had the robot that cleaned the house. Yeah. But uh, other, I think they actually drove the, the vehicle. You are correct, sir. So, but that was my that was my first uh, reason of wanting, you know, a car like oh. that. That Night Rider and oh. Time Cop. If somebody gave sure. me Night Rider right now, I'd be like, uh, yeah. yeah. I'd, and it have I know to have that car is like thirty the, years old. The little what, what model of car was it? It, it was, was a Trans Am. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It was that a definitely black, black Trans Am. Did yep. it have the T tops on it? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Did tan leather interior? Yeah, with the little red LED. That yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, good times. That's I think we're going to keep going back to that because yeah. that was just so like Time Cop. You know, in any of these That's that have come along, mm-hmm. they're more like quick hits, quick hits. Their progress, mm-hmm. but but really, Knight Rider kind of set the standard. Well, no one said Hasselhoff yet. <laughs> the Hoff, <laughs> don't mess with the Hoff. Don't, don't mess with the Hoff. Um, they did. Uh, did anybody ever watch the the remake of? Um, Night Rider negative. No, nope. didn't even nope. know they did that. Yeah, they did. A, it was a short mini series, and well, I might have done like season one, season two, but they used a, a black Mustang Cobra, I believe, uh, a little bit more modern. 
So, <laughs> well, speaking of Black Mustang Cobra, I was at uh, Runza a couple days ago, and I got my Runza, and I was coming out, and this guy flying around the corner in this brand new Mustang Cobra, mm-hmm. and he, like just picture looking out into space, being close to Saturn, overlooking Mars with a moon over in the corner. That's the look he did on the side of his brand new car was outer that's, space. That's I, a, I, you know, what do you go to? You go to, the, you, you go to the guy that paints it, and you're like, I have this dream of space. He goes, stop there. I got this. <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it was the weirdest mural on the side of a car that I've ever seen in my entire life. But, hey, you know, yeah. to each his own, you're driving a space car. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> What a tweet is on, right? right? Exactly. Whatever you want to do. You Sorry, wanna... I digress. That's, that's right. Let's get back to the self-driving no, stuff. No, that's okay. So there's actually um, some precedent in movies, but there is uh, some new things coming out that are currently available to us right now. Uh, Waymo is one of the uh, the, the uh, companies that was started out of Google, and they, uh, they have a fully autonomous fleet of about 100... Uh, Chrysler Pacificas, which um, the new Chrysler Pacificas are more minivan like, and they they use the hybrid version. But uh, there is no driver. There is <laughs> it's it, it's an actual Chrysler Pacifica, so they didn't like remove the steering wheel or anything. But uh, th- it's it's an actual minivan. But it'll come and it'll pick you up, and you just get in the back, and it goes. And uh, wow, yeah. So they um, they're only doing this uh, in just several or uh, select cities. I think California. Was Did one. I hear you say Chrysler Pacifica? Sorry, I was checking the yeah, audio. Yeah, Chrysler on Pacifica. Uh, well, they first started off with this little bug car first. First, they started with Google, the Prius, and the Lexus. Yes, right, right. Yes, yes. And then they moved into. They actually built a car. They called it the Firefly. The Firefly. Yeah, it had no steering wheel, had no pedals. So yeah. it was the first time ever two seater to have a vehicle with none of those devices. Oh, yeah, like Vanilla Sky or what? What is it? Or- wasn't that the movie where Tom Cruise and uh, oh yeah, didn't that control was, yeah. anything? Like, yeah, you just I got t- in. Yeah, I totally remember Vanilla Sky. But yeah, it was uh, very very similar to that. Uh, it's only a two seater, only top speed of twenty five yeah. miles an hour. I'm sure there was a big giant red button that you could like press and be like, oh, stop. But the first person that they actually put in the car to test drive that vehicle. Was a blind guy. <laughs> yeah. He was a CEO. Oh, like, the, you, know. you know, he won't put up a fuss. Just tell him that there's somebody in the front seat. Yeah. I think that was in Austin, Texas. It was down in Austin, yeah, Texas. That's awesome. So I did hear that one of those got pulled over for doing 25 and a 40. Or where like the minimum well, that was speed. the top speed. Yeah, it was yeah, 25. The, right. His top speed was 25, but it was in a like a minimum 40 zone. And so it, they pulled it over, which begs the question, if there's no steering wheel and no brakes, how did it get pulled over? Right. I guess that's part of the programming. If it sees the red flashing lights behind it, red yeah. and blue flashing lights. Yeah. Speaking of that, we will get into the programming here yeah, later. Oh, I'm there's there's awesome. a whole lot of programming yeah. stuff that I want to talk yeah. about. So I did want to talk a little bit about the uh, the original, you know, from Google with the Prius and Lexus and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I'm sure people have seen pictures or seen video of that where they had the giant thing that was attached. A little bubble like, on the top. Yeah. So that's called a LiDAR. Mm-hmm. And um, it's actually more expensive than the vehicle. The vehicle. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. They had, they had it was. mounted on one of the Lexus SUVs. And they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, this LiDAR was more expensive than the Lexus SUV. I'm wow. like, whoa. Now, that's yeah. not what they also use for. That's not just the cameras for like Google Earth. It's This is a different thing. It, it Well, it's kind of like a. The LIDAR, which I don't remember what it stands for, but I, from what I read about it, it's like laser radar okay. yeah. is what yeah. LIDAR no, is. It detects would, yeah. everything so it's in not, its peripheral. It's not just cam- it's not 360 cameras. It's, it is 360, it's, yeah. 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 not cameras. Gotcha. Right. All right. So the cameras yeah. are separate. That's, that's that, they mm-hmm. use like a redundancy system. So yeah. there's cameras gotcha. and there's lasers and there's right. radar and sonar. Right. And so, I mean, when you're dealing with people's lives here, you can't be too careful mm-hmm. on that. So... Um, but yeah, they've they've got it down now to where it's a lot less expensive, and it's within the realm of uh, of just attaching to a vehicle today for not a whole lot of money. They're trying to bring it down to like a you know fifteen hundred dollar option, two thousand wow. dollar option. So on production vehicles. So are we today. talking about retrofitting? Like, could I retrofit my two thousand seven whatever? Well, with that, I don't said, know about a two thousand seven, but if you look up. at cars today, you could. So uh, George Holtz. Uh, you may have heard of George Holtz as the guy who was the first person who cracked into an iPhone and made it public so that he could join another network besides, I believe, as AT&T nice. was the first people that did it. So uh, he... U.S. Cellular, I thought, was the... Whoever did yeah, anyway, the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Anyway... No, was, you're right, it was at and It was at and yeah. who did the iPhone. Uh, he made it so that um, you could use it on any network. 
So he hand broke the phone essentially. Wow. Um, and then he topped that one by hand breaking a uh, PS uh, three. Um, and so you could play any game you wanted on it, not just PS3 games. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Uh, well, PS3 came back, and he's the buddy you want to have. Well, mm-hmm. well, no, well, Apple sent him a congratulatory letter, like, "Good job, like, right. nice, nice, nice work." Right. Right? I didn't think anybody could do this, but you did it. Uh, but PS3, uh, which was Sony, uh, <laughs> filed a lawsuit, mm-hmm. and he's all like, "Well, I own this thing. Right. This is mine. Do I actually physically own it when I buy I it? I don't care that I voided the warranty. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so his next thing is um, he owns this uh, company called uh, Comma AI, um, and they are working on uh, autonomous cars for everyone. Essentially, it's a plug-and-play system so that you take this little chip and you plug it into your car, and he's saying that he's saying that uh, you should be able to do it in models 96 or higher. Wow. So, yeah. So, um, now, with that said, uh, not all the features would be available. Um, right. Like, not, yeah, not every single feature would be available. Because, like, power steering, uh, which went away from hydraulic steering, was, you know, more in the 2000s, more than, you know, sure. instead of in the 96s. I don't know. I think they still had, they had power steering in 96. Well, you, so you know what? They didn't have like other the front things, other things and of all that, that nature. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a, essentially he's creating this device that hooks up to your phone. You put your phone in this little clip thing in the front. It creates a front radar system. It uses all your backup sensors, cameras, and all that stuff, front sensors, you know. But he's going to run it for about a thousand bucks. So totally affordable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's what he's working on right now. So to answer your question, your 2007 can be retrofitted. Nice. If a 96 you can, your 2007 can. But Absolutely. Yeah, if you, if you look at cars today, you know, with the front sensors for parking right. and the, the little cameras underneath the side view mirrors, I mean, there's not really a whole lot left. And that's probably one of my big comments coming into this is that it's similar to when we when we started, you know, shuttling around the earth and all that, that... Mm-hmm. I don't know that all of that technology Im- became what I, I didn't expect to go up and like take my kid up there. It's like, hey, we're going to spend 200 bucks and go tour the earth. Right. Mm-hmm. But the incremental, the, the transformational step to be able to do that mm-hmm. led to all of this. I, I think it's well documented that that much of NASA's technology has become filters down just normal Vel- stuff. Velcro. Right. Just normal yeah, stuff. Me. Hook and loop. So excuse me. even <laughs> if and I really don't I, I question an American control, I question freedom. What, there's an element of this that is freedom, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have to think about driving, but there's also an element of getting out there and driving, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think you're going to be able to, honestly, I think on most of them, you're going to be able to flip-flop them. That's my my opinion in the next 20 to 50 well, years. Well, yeah, you have to start off with something that you're able to, um, uh, with uh, George Holt's uh, program mm-hmm. that he was right. saying for a 1000 bucks. he goes, as soon as you press on the gas or you press on the brake, as soon as you do that, you instantaneously you're take control of the car. Right. Yeah, yep. so that, I think... Getting people into feeling okay with a self-driving car, right. the transition has to be uh, what you were just talking I've, about. It's going to have to be a hybrid right now. Yeah. And and then the, ne- and then the next generation, it's just going to be norm. Mm-hmm. I mean, my kid, the iPhone is a norm. Like, right. And I had to explain that to my mom this earlier today. We were like, no, you don't understand part of why he has to limit screen time. I didn't have access to screens all the time. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and, and We didn't but, have to limit our right. screen time because we didn't have that. Right. We had, we had somewhat limited screen time. And, and uh, so anyway, I think that same thing's true here, that it's going to be a, it's gonna be a, a human evolution as much as it is a technology evolution. Well, and I think once yeah. they start getting um, kind of like what Tesla's doing, where like on the highway you can use an – uh, quote unquote autopilot right. feature yep. around town. Yeah, please have your hands on the wheels and take control of your own vehicle. But once you get on the highway, let's do that. But that that's an incremental step. Yep. You know, if you get people used to, oh, I can get on the highway and I don't have to drive. You know, it's not really that much of a leap to say, oh, now your car's fully autonomous. Right. right. So it, you know, you've you've done it before. Now it's just all the time instead of well. And I think it, another one. There's going to be markets. There's going to be people that want this autonomous. Yeah. Well, and I don't really care which one's cheaper or more expensive. There's going to be people that want that, and there's going to be people that absolutely don't want that. It's kind of funny. Uh, I was actually watching this uh, some TED talks, and I was uh, watching this uh, talk that uh, Elon Musk was in, uh, the 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 guy of Tesla, Tesla. Um, and he's saying that um, this might not be a good thing. And and everybody's like, well, what are you talking about? Self driving cars? It's going to make things safer. It's going to do all these you know awesome amazing things. And he's all like, well, here's what's going to 
here's here's going to be the problem is that we will start getting these self-driving cars and people will love it and they'll start taking that more and more instead of taking like city buses and all that he said then we're going to get congested with a whole bunch of traffic that's that, so now he wants to do stuff like underground well that's it's a fair point but it's a yeah. little flawed because if you think right. about it from the standpoint of we'll get it, into pros and cons for okay. sure all right yeah let's yeah. let's so the last one that i wanted to do talk about before we got into the pros and cons Uber is actually starting to get into this. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, Uh, Pittsburgh, I believe, is where it's starting. And well, that's one of the towns, but yeah, Um, San Francisco, Pittsburgh, and somewhere in Arizona, probably Phoenix. But they're using these uh, the Volvo SUVs, Mm -hmm. um, one of the safest cars or safest (laughs) car companies, I should say. But yeah, once large companies like that start getting into this, Tesla, Uber, Google, uh, Waymo. Once large companies start getting into this, that's when we're going to see some real change over the next couple of years. Well, and, and it, what I was trying to get into, the markets of people, um, they have a semi-truck now. Uh, it's called the Inspiration Semi-Truck, uh, and it's the first self-driving semi-truck, which is awesome because they, you know, the, the mileage that semi-trucks do compared to just normal people driving around is var- vastly different. Um, but the funny thing is, Elon Musk... Tesla just rolled out their new truck line. And I'm like, you know what's right behind that. I know what's mm-hmm. right behind that. I know you don't want self-driving cars, but Tesla is going to have a self-driving semi-truck Absolutely. with the new battery-operated semi-trucks they got now. Yep. Did you see the new um, the new Wolverine, uh, Logan? Mm-mm. No. Yep. So um, it's based way in the future. Um, but that's one of the things that they have is um, – they have vehicles where people drive, but really it's the, the fully autonomous autonomous vehicles are the semi-trucks. Yeah. And they don't look like semi-trucks. They look like four wheels and a shipping container. Right, just a container. Yeah. Well, and with that said, uh, you could you could make a, a freight yard, a shipping yard, fully autonomous, taking freight off, you know, and then they drop it on the truck, and then the truck's automated, bada-bing, bada-boom. You know, bada yes, bing, bada boom. <laughs> it, well, it doesn't go I, bada bing, bada boom anymore because there's less accidents. Right. You know, curious. We've got some military experience here, and a lot of times the military drives this. What's the what's the word there? Is there any well UAVs, ha- um, which are unmanned aerial vehicles? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's you tell us what the heck that is because yeah. Phew. Okay, UAVs or drones, as most people call them. Gotcha. Unmanned aerial vehicles is what that stands for. There is a pilot to it, but most of the time it's flying in autonomous, you know, just getting over there. That's there a long, go. boring flight. Just, okay, tell me when you get close and then I'll take Isn't the that Think about the human amount of time we save there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and think about taking a road trip in a vehicle and uh, being able to sleep. RVs. I am waiting for a self driving RV. I mean,. All right, so now I'm back on my United or, or American Airlines flight over you know anything of any length. They're so, mostly so, autonomous. So we're going to start paying pilots, and this makes perfect sense. We're going to pay pilots to sit on the ground, control takeoff, mm-hmm. get it up to altitude, Autopilot. Let, it, let it go, mm-hmm. then they come back on. They will be able to land and, and, and take off three times as many flights. Dang. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what they're doing now, but they're just doing it inside the plane, and they're only doing one plane at a time. They're yeah. Doing so let's. Well, but it's coming because labor costs, human costs. When you think about that, I mean, that's what it is for Uber. That's what it is for the trucking company mm-hmm. is to be able to cut the human cost out of that portion. portion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm. Uh, I, not, I come back just one specific thing. Then so we hear it in the sky for the military. What about the? What about? I mean, think about transport and logistics, and I, I'm surprised they're not pushing it further. Oh, actually. they're they're already talking about doing like autonomous, uh, like tanks and all that to get wow. in the front lines. Oh, yeah, that's that's a thing. Um, the new, and I I, I want to say Zumwalt, the new Zumwalt cl- class destroyers. I think that's Zumwalt, but uh, they are they're not 100 percent autonomous, but they're mostly autonomous. So wow. you have very small crews in comparison to the size of the ship because everything's automated. Yeah. Wow. So awesome. one, one of our good friends, Moses, we'll is come watching back on, again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. So Moses from down in Texas, um, he was saying, hey, did you check out the new Samsung camera that's on semi trucks? And I was like, wow, I didn't know camera. The Samsung did that on the trucks. So I have to check that out. Mm-hmm. They do the front facing and uh, rear facing cameras on on the new semi trucks. And I, I have you seen the uh, and Samsung's this is, everywhere. This is I, like, cracked, oh, I, no, I cracked open my uh, computer. Right, uh, it was acting weird, and I had to reset, you know, batteries and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And there is a chip in my Apple computer that says Samsung, Samsung on it. I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I'm oh, actually thinking the same thing. Time for a break now. Yep. So, we'll um, break. We'll break. and while, while we're on that break, yeah, you were going to say something. Yeah, I'm going to do a little uh, side tangent on that one. Have you uh, have y'all seen the uh, the new safety feature that they're trying to get on a semi trucks where the 
you know how before where they did the little airfoil on the back of semi trucks mm-hmm. to kind of decrease the yeah, or increase their gas mileage? Right. Well, then they they got the thing on the uh, underneath on the sides as well. Yeah, what they want to do now? Oh, it's just <laughs> this is your beer. It is. What am I? <laughs> I'm at the grab mine. <laughs> Um, so what they want to do is they want to have like a display on the back of the truck that actually uses the forward facing camera of the truck. So you can see what's going on in front of the semi. So if you go to pass it, like on a two lane highway, you can actually see what's in front of or what's coming towards the brilliant. semi. Yeah. Brilliant. So you can see around it. Be like an invisible SUV or an invisible truck. Now, hang on. Am I hearing you right that it links up with the car in front of it? No, it? no, no. It's the forward-facing camera right. of the truck oh, gotcha. is yeah. being displayed on the tailgate of the semi. Right. That's cool. I think yeah. that's what he's talking about. Maybe. Maybe Bo is, yeah, is yeah. talking about that. I, I knew it was theoretical. That is. And, he but, said that is what I was talking about. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That is cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. But with that said, I didn't know it was Samsung that did that. So. Uh, with Make- that said, um, <clears throat> I was watching this TED talk about uh, 3D transportation networks. Um, so, you know, uh, your beer sitting right there. In front I of know you mind. You got to rinse out. I don't. We we just, oh, you just pour right up on top of it. Yeah, we're not that fancy. I thought you had a bar back there. We, I mean, <laughs> I could do this. Stop it. <laughs> There's a new cup for you. Um, but what he was uh, talking about in this is that um, all cars would be networked with themselves, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's saying it's kind of just like um, the bloodstream in your body. Uh, Your your red blood cells travel at a a pace that's just amazingly fast. And uh, what he was saying was um, if we could robotize, robotize, am I saying that right? Uh, Our traffic, that it would act like an... Automate our traffic. It it, it would act like an organic system. And we could travel in cities at... 60 miles an hour well, that, um, that's where if they were all going, connected. That's yeah. where I was going with that uh, a while back uh, when you said, well, hold on, you're going to do pros and cons. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's where I was going with that is once you automate traffic patterns uh, and you have autonomous vehicles, the traveling distance can be a foot. It doesn't have to be two car lengths. It can be a foot because yeah. it's linked with the cars around it. Yeah. So it knows if there's issues coming up or whatever. And, and if that car in front of it has to slam on its brakes, yeah. um, it would just immediately do that yeah it would it would know and you could run it at a, a faster speed you could have it running 100 miles an hour instead of the 60 65 miles an hour so yeah it's it's going to decrease congestion Dang, i didn't think about that either yeah Dang. yeah well and let's you know if you're on the interstate and you're running a foot in you know a foot behind the car in front of you and there's something that needs to come onto the interstate all it has to do is increase <laughs> that traveling distance and um uh, get that vehicle in there because all the vehicles are talking to each other. Sure. So yeah, simple. Done. Oh man, that, I mean that's where it gets just like. Well, and I mean like, you think about even like the when they set standard gauge on on locomotives because you know at the very beginning that wasn't the case. Somebody mm-hmm. somebody got to set the standard mm-hmm. and just whoever there's a whole mar- there's whole markets here there's whole businesses that don't even exist. Well, and you said that word real quick. You know before. You, dang. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do dead gum. <laughs> Watch yourself. Dead. Dead. Sorry Getting for a little the feedback. Out. I got a little excited. <laughs> there you go. So, now this is actually one we've actually had on the show before. Brian didn't realize that, yeah. but you know what? It's one of my uh, not one of my favorites, but it is one of my top beers that mm-hmm. I do like. So yeah, and I I was doing that because of the uh, um when you hear about some of the stuff, you're just like. There you go. Just, just like you said. There you go. There you yeah. go. I didn't mm-hmm. know this was going to happen. <laughs> uh, Taping in Nebraska. Taping in Nebraska. Oh. Hey. All right. I had a little alert pop up here to share something with you, but that's all right. Um, huh? What? So, I don't know. That was kind of weird. Our, our apples me? are talking to each other. Yeah. Oh, hey. Well, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> no, that's all right. That was weird. Yeah. Hey, John. So, anyway. Oh, John. John, John C. John. Johnny C. Johnny C. Johnny Excellent. B was on there earlier. We got a bunch of Johns. We, we need to try some of this day going. Oh, oh day going. We do. Day going. Oh, Watch that. Oh, I did that without day. feedback that time. Nice. Though I think I poured like about a 16, mm. I mean a 21 year old. Mm. What kind of rookie you know, was oh that? No, okay, so here's the thing with uh, Beer Head. You know, when, when you're you younger. You actually want it. You do. You, you do. do want it because it, it actually uh, opens up the flavors. Absolutely. Oh. And as a side benefit to that, 
Think about if you pour a beer with no head on it, you know how much carbonation is in that beer? Yeah. You know what it's doing to your stomach? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let it it air out a little bit. So you're actually doing a a great job. This comes uh, from us down in Texas, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rar and Sons. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, We actually, uh, they were actually, Rar and Sons was at the Nebraska Brewing Festival. Nice. uh, Beer Fest. Um, And that was one of the first times I've had them. And they're also on tap. Uh, downtown on at uh, oh what was a, a, a tap house uh, downtown right as you get off there on 14th Street. Oh, um, nice. So yeah, shout out to Tap House. That's uh, that's where I got the sign from Odell's Brewing Company. Oh hey, oh hey. Uh, so yeah, no the Dagon IPA, uh, hands down better than the no paddle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm just right. sorry. It's it's got a little bit more crisper of a flavor. It, the, well, now the no paddle was smooth. It was good. It was good. So if you want a smooth this beer, is better. This has a little bite to yeah. it. This one, this one. But I like, like the bite. Yeah, it's the hoppy bite. Hop happy bite. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Now there's that measure of hoppiness. There's the uh, IBUs, yeah. International Bitterness Units. <clears throat> Where would this be on the IBU scale? Do we have any idea? This, this is a 6.6 ABV alcohol by volume. Mm-hmm. And I did look up Rar and Sons on my uh, tablet. Yeah. So let's see if they. Which they didn't have the... With that said, when this guy was talking about 3D uh, tra- uh, transportation networking, mm-hmm. uh, he ran a map in real time, and it looked like uh, things were going a bazillion miles an hour. It's like this one intersection, and traffic was just going like this. It was just like, you know, because they know exactly where they're at at all times. And so oh. there would be no need for stop signs, traffic lights. There would be no need for... Uh, one-way streets, um, there would be no need for any, like, lanes. You know why? That car could <clears> just be anywhere, and uh, the other cars around it would know where it's at. So, again, taking us on a tangent, because I'm good at that. Yeah. One of the places that's going to kick our behinds on this is some place that doesn't have too many roads right now, Africa somewhere, mm-hmm. because we're used to that. We're, you know... There's if if I ever get to write a book and this is a, a really silly tangent, it'll be about the cities that have burned Rome, Chicago, those places. Because when you start over, you got to start with the new stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. we have all this legacy infrastructure. We have all these legacy jobs, legacy costs. Mm-hmm. You know, you think about right now Tesla building all their their power stations. Well, guess who doesn't want those next door? That'd mm-hmm. be the gas station, right? Because yeah. oh crap, that's our jobs going out the well, window. Well, that's right? why Tesla announced when they came out with the the power truck. You bring the station with you. Uh, I was like, ooh, uh, smart. It's well, like you just plug it into an outlet. Bada bing, bada boom. Well, and to your point, if you've ever traveled overseas and you notice the things that you can do with your cell phone, like purchase a soda from a vending machine using your cell phone. Yeah. I mean, those are things that we don't have here in the United States because our infrastructure is so old to retrofit that into our infrastructure is highly costly but you gotta pay bob he's the one that fills the vending machine Mm -hmm. so no you can still pay bob you still pay (laughs) bob yeah you still need somebody to fill it yeah i'm just saying yep i don't uh back to your original uh question there i don't uh they don't have the ibus see i so in my scale of ipas i would still put this in the middle I mean, I don't know relative oh, to that sure. first one, but sure. it's not no. over the top hops because to me that word. One of you used the word crisp. Mm-hmm. It's crisp, and yeah. I almost would say this is around because I, I would be on the, the lesser half of that, mm-hmm. which to me there's some 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 hints of uh, wheat in this that okay. I I like a lot. In fact, some of it's the color more of a wheat beer. I mean, oh, look, yeah. just to take a look at it, it looks like a wheat beer. Yeah, you know, and a lot of a lot of IPAs have some of that, but it's. It's good. Wait mm-hmm. till you get to the next one, the it's F5. Good. Oh, yeah. That's going to be off the charts awesomely awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you get into the double IPAs is when you get your high kick in the teeth hops. The next five seconds sponsored by Google, Roboticize. That's the answer. Ro- okay. Roboticize. Oh, there, yeah. You're, you, you were asked. looking for the word? Ah, there you go. Roboticize. There you go. To turn to make something robotic, Roboticize. roboticize. I, think, I think automate would be a little well, bit better. Well, it would work, but... Yeah. All right, so let's. Uh, why don't we get into some pros and cons? Let's uh, start with pros because okay. pros will take a long time. Cons will take a long time too. I gotta pros gonna switch take a long my time. notes. Should we go one, every other one? No, okay, that's uh, really confusing. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, no, just let's start with the pros. That's a really bad idea by the guest host. <laughs> uh, well, here I'll start it off. Uh, old people, uh, blind people, um, no DUIs. So old people can get out and and do their thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
blind mm-hmm. people can get out and do their thing and DUIs go away because, yeah. <laughs> frankly, you're not driving the car. That, that's something that I want to bring up to Grant, but I want to do it in the cons section. So we're going to we're gonna put a bin, pin in that. All right. There it is. Put a little pin in that put one. Put a pin in it. Yep. All, right. All right. So, but yeah, the, I agree with you on uh, getting uh, disabled people mm-hmm. out there that are not able to drive. Absolutely. Yeah. I Actually. have a neighbor that's disabled. He has to rely totally on his wife in order mm-hmm. to take him anywhere. Yep. These things could just show up. You just pull Game your change. wheelchair right up into it. and Game change. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's and, gone. And I would one-up the DUI, and I would just throw that under the distracted driving. What do you mean by distracted driving? Anything. Uh, so oh, yeah, uh, like cell phones and yeah, right. things of that cell nature. Cell phones, driving drunk. I mean, if you're in a state that has uh, well, that would fall under time. marijuana laws. That, uh, would, that would fall under the time saver. Um, you don't have to worry about driving your car. Now you can answer emails, you can talk to people on the mm-hmm. phone, you can text, so it's a time saver. Yep. yep. But it also makes it safer. Safety was mine. Safety uh, is a big thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. It eliminates human error, mm-hmm. at, at least mm-hmm. as much as possible. Minimizes. Minimizes, yeah, as much as possible. I heard one guy say that it might uh, lower the drinking age because uh, now that, you know, 21, you got to be 21 to drink. He's like, well, if you've got a self-driving car... We could lower it to eighteen. People could drink at eighteen, and did you hear that? Not a big uh, thing. Did you hear that Wyoming is actually looking at nineteen? The music just what? changed. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, crazy. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, well, so you're saying a lot of people are going to be moving to Wyoming here soon? So, that, <laughs> <laughs> Colorado's a uh, spot to go. So, uh, the people are, place. Yeah. Wyoming's like, how can we get in on that action? We don't want to do weed. Oh, I know. Let's lower the drinking age. Oh, that sounds brilliant. <laughs> that, that does not no. sound brilliant. I mean, it, so that gets into. I mean, there's so many other issues with alcohol and weed, for that matter. But you know, part of it. I'm married to a school psychologist. I know your wife's in in a similar field. You know. Mm. Part of it's just how our brains form, <laughs> form mm-hmm. you know, and, and you got some super mature 13-year-olds, but, you know, I don't know. That's that's an interesting one mm-hmm. at, at Wyoming. Good luck with that, Wyoming. Mm-hmm. Good luck with that. Here's another one. Uh, car chases now would be found on the History Channel. Mm-hmm. There wouldn't be any more car chases. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right there with the the, the, uh, the policeman would just be like, uh, "Car pulled over, down. done." The, <laughs> the buggy whip and the yeah. Well, they can do that now with OnStar. What? Yeah, they can they can shut your vehicle down if you have like on. They can also so, throw spikes out the so street too. Go back to vanilla. <laughs> well, that, but that's like you could lose control with the spikes. Yeah. If they can hack into your system using yeah. OnStar, yeah, shut the, you down. Yeah, they could shut you down remotely without using the strips. Yeah. Why why endanger other people's life when we could slowly stop you? Yep, and just park you over there. And oh, by the way, if you you know they know remember the what you were saying about the 3D mapping and all that. Oh, that bank got robbed, or that. Remember the the gentleman that ran over somebody in their pickup truck? Like, well, that would that be, wouldn't that would go away? That'd, that'd mm-hmm. be pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the car wouldn't allow you to drive over somebody, yeah. and then it would also put you at the scene of the crime. Mm-hmm. If that was more that was more my point, but yes, mm-hmm. yeah, trackable, mm-hmm. trackable, environmentally friendly, because if your car is automated. <laughs> the speeding up and slowing down and all that stuff that goes away because it's driving better, so you have more fuel efficiency. And, and I'll I'll split the hairs on that one. I mean, that can come on the count side as, as well because uh, you mentioned the be a cars be able to go 100 miles an hour. Well, it, like there's some insane stat about every five miles an hour you go faster, you lose eight percent of you know. Right, but there's an optimal there's, speed yeah, of like 65. Absolutely, hour, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But it, well, the countryside would be different than in city. But you know. but not to go political on this, but you can see right now there are going to be two debates. There's going to be two sides of this coin. One says, "Get me. I know I could be more productive, yeah. but I want to go there max speed." Mm-hmm. And so that's what the the standard should be counted right. is is if if this thing can go up to ninety five, let it go ninety five. Yeah. The other one says sixty eight is the max environmental speed. There we go, boom, ba doom, boom. I mean, it, ooh, well, yuck, yeah, huge debate, yuck. Well, and if you look at if you look at car technology, I would say, you know, forty years ago, uh, the the optimal speed on a car was probably fifty miles an hour. Okay. Today, with aerodynamics and a fuel f- and the way the engines are running, at uh, not peak efficiency, Absolutely. but but way better efficiency, I would say I think sixty five seventy sixty eight. Mi- yeah, that's where I was going. Yep. Is is but who's to say in in ten or twenty more years when technology? Yeah. Who's to say a hundred miles an hour isn't the optimal speed yep. for gas mileage? Yep. No. Nope. Very true. Yep. Um, Britt already mentioned the more productive commute. 
or you could sleep mm-hmm. during road trips. People would awesome. say that it would lower car insurance. Mm-hmm. Yep. Could, That'd it, be great. It, because it it'd be a lot safer. So you know? the same thing about minimizes seat human belts. And, minimizes uh, human error. It, so we actually and, invest in all I say we, not any. any. So it's like the III, I think. or I, Again, I'm... Uh, International Interstate Institute? No, International Insurance. <laughs> something. Okay. But, but we collaborate. The big insurance companies work with, with universities, and, and we really do because we want to lose less money. Mm-hmm. So we figure in the short run, we'll charge the same and have fewer exposures and... You know, and then and then eventually there'll be market pressures and it'll bring it down. But short term, it'll increase profitability. Yeah. Why am I paying you this? And I uh, bought an autonomous car that hasn't had an accident. You know, since I bought it twelve years ago. But humans have a, an interesting way of screwing this up. Mm-hmm. Two cases very quickly in point number one. What we just talked about it used to be the fifty miles an hour was the ideal speed. Mm-hmm. Ah, cars are safer. Let's let them go sixty eight. Sixty eight might be fewer accidents, but the accidents we have are higher impact and all that. Right. So. Oh, now we got we, we got we got cars already with uh, you know resistant technology and all that. Still a tremendous amount of rear-ending accidents and accidental run, running over of people. I mean, so but that's we, not happening. At six, we humans find an amazing way to screw this up. But that's not happening at the sixty-eight miles an hour. Those that's those are interstate speeds yeah. where the where the rear-endings are happening are right. more than right. likely in town. That is true. Well, and true. what I said was... But, but back to the 68, because we're capable of going 68 when it goes wrong, mm-hmm. 68 is worse than 52. What are the, Do you know off the top of your head, and if you don't, that's fine, uh, statistics on the interstate versus in town? I don't. No, okay. I don't. Uh, I can uh, tell you... your opinion? Oh, what, what, I can tell you anecdotally. Are you just asking volume of accidents? Yeah, which... which oh, which, nine which, to one. Okay, in town is way worse. Nine than, to one in town. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. Well, there, yeah. But what I said was lower insurance costs. Now let's figure this Which one out. Which is good because that keeps money in our pockets. I like that. With that said, I'm not driving the car anymore. Who's insuring what? Okay, you're getting into some cons. Ooh, I promise <laughs> I will yeah, take. I will field these questions. <laughs> yes. I promise. Wait, wait, Britt. We'll put a pin in that one because right, we got to right. wait for cons on that one. So um, I don't know if it's con. I think it's something we just need to talk about. Yeah, we got to talk. It's about. not it's, a con. It's not a pro. It's it's, oh, it's not. Yes, neither. It's, really, it's neither. It's, it's right a now. riveting conversation. Drink yeah. talk on insurance. <laughs> insurance. Wow. This is why I only Tune, get invited once t- a quarter. Yeah. Tune into the insurance talk on drink. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> but we are drinking, so we could make it a little lighter. It, 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 it gets into who's at fault when yeah. accidents. We'll come happen. back to it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we had talked a little bit about the uh, wind link traffic patterns, congestion could be eased, more efficient, uh, increased speed limits and all that. Ease of parking. We could actually have yeah. people parking correctly. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, so you go down to, uh, here we go to, down to Jazz on the Green. Mm-hmm. And we all just show up and beep, hop out, car's going to park itself. Like, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, sweet. Yeah. Well, um, there was this guy who's actually working on a bus system like that. So the back end of the bus has got like three of these mini cars on it. And then, so you're sitting in your seat, and you enter your destination into the spot. And while you're sitting in your seat, you, your destination's coming up. Your seat just moves, and then you move into this pod, and the pod breaks off of the bus. And then that the, seems the, the, way the pod will come. The and next time the bus comes by, the pod <laughs> comes on. And yeah, yeah. I, I neat idea. You know, it is. I I think that's complicating it a little more than it needs to be. Well, so. it, it's it's talking about how. Essentially, everybody to be traveling in a bus. Essentially, to to defend uh, Brit on that idea. I mean, if you pause and think about the internet, oh my god! All of a sudden, the back end of the bus breaks the, off. You're like, oh, this is exposed air. It's cold the, outside. Can somebody close that? The internet is the insanely complicated answer to exchanging, but it's not. Yeah, right. Because yeah. it's so rich. Well, here, so I would say that idea would be more in tune with like places like New York. Yeah. You know, or Chicago, right. or you know, large cities where there's huge congestion problems. And I'll even go so far that individual idea might be nuts, but it's some of those nuts ideas that are going to yeah. take us someplace new. It might spark another idea absolutely. that's genius. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here's an interesting one: reduced car theft. Oops, sorry. Uh, because if all these are autonomous vehicles, a how are you going to steal it, and b even if you do get to steal it, they can probably track you because everything's talking yeah, to yep. each other. Because you're going to go sell those parts, and they're like, uh, "We're the only people that sell those parts, so yeah. you can't sell those that, parts." So that would be like a kit moment, right? Like yeah. you hop in this thing to steal it, and it's like, um, "Excuse me, who are you?" Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was that RoboCop where it just electrified the person? Oh yeah, that was, that was, I don't, that was I don't know. Control. You might know the stats on this. Are are is theft of of certain phones down because of their 
security function. I mean, they I, they did say that when um when iPhone came out with the thumbprint scanner yeah. that the the those all went down. Nice. I don't know if they've had a workaround because as technology does, <laughs> if you create a technology, someone will exploit it. So yeah. somebody sure. will break into an iPhone and yep. yeah. Hand break it now with the facial recognition. Do they do they do the facial recognition because now they've figured out how to do the thumbprint thing? Maybe I don't know. Uh, those are those are things that tech companies really don't want you Samsung's to know. Samsung's had that for years. <laughs> I don't know anything we, about that. We I, see how well that works for Samsung. I bet the I bet the I bet the Apple and it's the forbidden fruit, and I'm drinking it for the rest of my life. <laughs> yep. Um, reduction in traffic cops. Yep. Well, yeah, that was another thing well, I, even, I, I got written down here. So I became a friend. I became friends with a detective that his job is the the stolen car ring. Right? Yeah. And, and there's probably multiple. Which, so now, it's not that we're going to need less cops, but what can we repurpose that? So has he solving seen a, crimes? Right. Is there is there like a reduction, in, like even t- by today's standards, because you have all these vehicles that are connected to satellites? Hmm? Um, is there a reduction in that, or are they figuring? Oh, absolutely. Out? Yeah. No. There. I mean, and and where the, again, that's where there's a very interesting. Um, so that cars still get stolen, but which cars get stolen changes. Yes. So, so they're they're looking at vehicles that either a are old and don't have that, or right. b don't have that available technology. Right. Gotcha. Yep. Or it can be yeah. disabled. Ooh, quick. that's a GM vehicle. They no, have OnStar. I, I don't know. I if think I a Conair where they threw the transporter off, like the ones yeah. where you can quick snap these two cables. And now you're off the grid. Like, mm-hmm. so. I think there's a little bit more to it than oh yeah. there is yeah. but between model model a of this car and model b of this car one of them is easier to for criminals to steal oh sure so, uh, absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah um that's why honda's always her no i'm just kidding <laughs> actually yeah, yeah honda, honda civics always top the list there or, yep. or, or very close you know to why it. Uh, easy to the, get into. Yeah, easy to get into and nope. easy to steal. Nope. Because uh, they're so ubiquitous. Uh, the parts. This is not what I've heard. The parts. Because. Ubiquitous. With. They're, they're everywhere. With. Ubiquitous with. Parts. Accurate. Oh, so they yeah. Are, Accur- yeah. They are truly basic. That, this is, again, this is anecdotal. This is not. Yeah. But, Accurate is the luxury edition of Honda. But more so, so <laughs> when you go to Toyota, they're not necessarily interchangeable as as much no, with the Lexus. Oh, to- uh, really? Yeah, so oh, okay. that's that's what. So you can take like literally under that those parts, the same parts can be resold for the one and a quarter time. One and oh, quarter. so either a Bingo. I've got either a I can just steal this car and sell the car, or right. b I can sell it for parts if I can't sell the car. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, make more money. Yeah, that gum, that gum, that gum is good. <laughs> uh, all right, well, should we uh, should we start moving into the cons, or do we need to? Get a third one, or oh, I'm sure. Are there go. any more pros? Uh, That's I'm all sure I had for pros. Okay. Do you? Can you think of any uh, any no. of the other pros on there? I mean, just I think just it would the, make oh, life easier. Yeah, that's what I was going. With, lifestyle change. Well, I, uh, yeah, the Internet of Things, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that is a distinct point that it, <laughs> all of a sudden that's interacting with my Fitbit, and it's going it, to for health insurance company. Your car is showing health, up in five minutes. Oh. Well, no, it's more than that. My health insurance company knows that I'm fat, mm-hmm. and so it makes my back to your pod idea. It makes my pod drop me off uh, three hundred yards further away than your pod because mm-hmm. you're thin, mm-hmm. and so I have to walk that. <laughs> I didn't even think about oh, that. Yeah, big data, baby. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Well, and that, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the monitoring stuff on our uh, Gattaca episode with DNA mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But even with like smartwatches and Fitbits and and governments tying into that information and saying, oh, we're going to charge you more because you know what? We've noticed that uh, you know on a uh, twelve hour stand thing where you didn't close your ring, oh, ever, and you uh, you sit probably uh, twenty hours out of the. 24 hours a day. So mm-hmm. how about we uh, charge you a little extra because you're sedentary? Mm-hmm. So, but that, that's a little you're side You're sedentary. Tangent. Yeah. Nice, yep. nice word choice. Well, like yeah, that. that's, <laughs> it just means not you don't work out. Right. Like, yeah. No, I know well, what it means. Yeah. I'm just nice word choice. And back to what I'm going to try to keep uh, from the pro or con side, the insurance thing. We're already there from progress in my, I've been at this for eight years and usage-based driving. So you paying more because you use your car more but again yeah. now we're going to know that much more oh so yeah who's driving this car now i'm gonna you know tesla's driving it yeah because how often do you drive Google. your car yeah. oh i only drive my car to the grocery <laughs> store and back and i walk to work <laughs> uh-huh sure sure okay oh is that why you traded your car in with a hundred thousand miles after yeah. five years all right <laughs> okay I have a car that sits how far away in, is this grocery store <laughs> yeah i have a car that sits in my driveway and i told my guy I said, I put about 50 miles a month on it. I was like, what can I get? And he's like, 
you got to prove to me that you do 50 miles a month. And I'm like, no, I can totally prove that. Here's my current mileage. Talk to me in a month. So, so yeah. for, for me, I'd put a little device in your car. And you'd get the... All right, progressive. You'd get the low... Nope, not even that company. <laughs> dongle. Nope, not even that company. But you'd, 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 you'd already... I would, I would give you the benefit of the doubt that you're telling me the truth. Yeah. But then that would prove that you are truly at the bottom, let's say, 5% or decile. Yeah. I just... It's, a, it, it's a spare and, car is what and, it is. And your rate could come down to... Forty percent. It could come down forty percent. But is is and that's why Progressive did come out. Not, oh, absolutely. Now you don't work with Progressive. Any, any, and any yeah. industry, why they're going yeah. to usage based? Yes. Well, yeah, but better, and that, and that better, was a voluntary thing. Better, better data, after the better show, rating. After okay. the show, maybe I need to talk yeah, to you about maybe. my interest. Maybe not. Maybe, but whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, other than a lifestyle change, any any other pros? I mean, once RVs <laughs> get self driving, man, I think RVs are gonna. Oh, yeah, that'd be even better to just go back and cook pancakes. You know? <laughs> well, okay, I'll go another one. If it, so, Brian, I want to share a car with you. Yeah. Because I just send it over to you. Like, yeah. I mean, you and I are neighbors. Well, it, makes, it makes that part. We're going well, to the car, same place kind of roughly. Well, car within a mile or two yeah. of each other. Yeah, I mean, it can keep going. We can co-own it. Neither one, of, you know, our odds of, of crashing it are down. Like, well, actually, you don't even co-own a car. I mean, what happens to car ownership at right. that point? Well, that's already, there, there is absolutely no question. Car well, ownership is on the decline. Well, with that said, who needs to own a car at all? You you say I I'm work saying. I work at eight o'clock. I need a car here at seven twenty, or even or even less than that. If you work at eight, I need it here at uh, seven fifty because it only takes me ten minutes now, where it normally would take me half an hour or forty five minutes to get to work. And that car just shows up. It goes bing. I'm in the driveway. You hop in, and it just goes. The government and you don't even me, own it. The government's no. going to give me a car. Yeah. Yeah. At what point is it public transfer? I mean, it, it's very interesting. Very well, that that starts moving into a little bit of the cons here, but uh, right. as we are almost done with this one, almost uh, done. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's 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 very interesting to to see where things are headed with um, the self driving cars, and I don't want to get into the future too much because I do want to end this with like, what do we what do we see on the horizon? But I I I think it's there's some very interesting positive things in the future too but we have to be careful are we doing a three or four tonight uh three or four usually exactly usually three (laughs) usually three three or four thank goodness yeah yeah. no this 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 could be the last one because we're going to get into cons i'm gonna have my self-driving car driving (laughs) i I live close that would be a pro i'm not opposed to uber for a mile yeah (laughs) having having a a self-driving car there's no rush here yeah no yeah i don't need to leave right away afterwards we could always do the after talk so depending on depending on there is a pool table behind you Mm -hmm. there is so this next one, uh, Britt, you brought this one, so why don't you talk about this one a little bit? Uh, yeah, um, this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's called the F5 IPA uh, by Cooper Ale Works. Uh, we got uh, 85 IBUs. It's a 7-1 alcohol content on that and an SRM, Brian. Do you know what that is, SRM? No, I don't. But the uh, uh, Apparently it's 11 I did, on I did want to let Grant know, so the IBU rating. Mm-hmm. 85 is almost at the tippy top because really anything mm-hmm. over about 90 or 95, your human palate cannot distinguish. Distinct, yeah, right. okay. So 85 is really at the tippy top. That's kind of like double I, double to triple IPA uh, territory right in there. Gotcha. I'm intrigued. So uh, one of the characteristics is is a little bit higher a, ABV, alcohol by volume. IPAs tend to have a little <clears throat> higher. Not always. Sure. Not always. This is a 7-1, so that's not... So like, is there is there should you drink your highest alcohol one early? Is there a philosophy to that within the the beer consumation world? I think that um, I think I, well, think I uh, meant consumption. Well, not consumption. all right, all right. Yeah, Let's I say know. with wine, you want to have kind of the crappy one first, and then no, you don't. You want to have the good ones first. No, 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 no. I I do it the other way around, you do so it that you 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 have the crappy one, he and then you. Wrong. I'm doing it wrong, apparently. Yep. So uh, here's the and then, no, and then you have the next here. one. You go, oh, oh, this is way better. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing is, if you have the good ones first, you remember oh the good ones. If right. you have the crappy stuff first, and then yep. you start getting inebriated, and you have yep. the good ones later, it's like, ah, okay, yeah, okay, that was, that was the good. next one. Yep. I Karen, don't Karen, what's the order we're supposed to? I see my wife popped on. What's the order we're supposed to drink our wines in? I know you'll you'll you'll. Well, it'd be the same things. thing for beer. Uh, what, good what good wine for first. Best ones for quality, quality before sure. you know, alcohol content per yeah. se. When, when it comes to <laughs> yeah, when you're when you're talking she texting, uh, you know which alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> when you're talking which alcohol I'm content. Gonna, I'm to not going to put that online. <laughs> there shouldn't be a uh, there shouldn't be an order to that. But uh, what I would say, 
person, my personal opinion on that would be drink the higher alcohol alcohol content stuff first, and then as you get further into the evening, drink the lower alcohol content stuff. I would to, I would agree with that. Yeah, that that's a that's a smarter decision making skill for yeah. sure. Yeah. So we did it kind of backwards because the first one was six four, the second one was like six six, and this one is seven one. So we're we're increasing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, I mean, it's all within the same. I mean, we're yeah. only like uh, four or five points. Just coming in like a tornado. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least they're not coming in like a wrecking ball. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> That'll just put a visual in everybody's oh, head. Oh, boy. <laughs> Miley Sack. Oh, boy. What happened? The wrecking ball. Yeah. She's back on her... Uh, she's back on her... You know, her new album is actually pretty decent. I was listening to it the other day, and I was like, you, uh, she uh, had a song with Dolly Parton, and I'm oh. like, "Oh, wow!" A really interesting that uh, Dolly Parton would do that, but uh, B, hey, let's let's give that. A they go. sounded very well together. Oh, good, yeah, oh, good for them. So um, she's, are we starting, gonna, she's not as crazy as she used to be. She's uh, getting more uh, civilized. Britney Spears so that's went. Nice. Through, Britney Spears went through a little. I mean, I, too, it, so. I mean, I kind of have to pay attention to her music because I am a DJ, so mm-hmm. hey, that falls in the realm DJ. of yeah, right. That falls in the realm of. Can I play this in the club? And her new stuff really can't be played in the club. It's more I'm nice sure and civilized and, you know. I don't know. Did you play her? You're uh, wearing a long length skirt, which is way better than what you used to wear. <laughs> did you, I, I bet you played a lot of the Party in the USA. I still to this day play that song from time to time. Yeah. It, 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 it all depends on how many girls you got in the club. The more girls you got in the club, you could play that song. <laughs> all right. Because well, they will respond to it. With that, as, as soon as uh, Grant's done texting... There, we'll uh, we'll clinky. Right, it's on him. <laughs> Let's clink. Tis, tis. Mm. This is the F five coming in, inchy hot. You know that for an eighty five IBU, that is smooth. Very smooth. I mean, I would say the other one had a little bit more bite than this it's one. One of my one of my go to beers. If uh, it's really good. If I'm looking for a beer and I'm stuck in the beer aisle that and I'm looking good. all around. I go right to this one if I can't make a decision. Did you talk about where it came from? Uh, I did not. Um, Cooper Ale Works Coop. out of Coop. Coop. My fault. Coop. C O O P. Coop Ale Works. Um, they come out of Oklahoma City, so right where the tornadoes are at. <laughs> Tornado that, Alley. That's appropriate. Maybe marketing. that's why they yeah, called right. it. Yeah. That's exactly. That's, well that's done, exactly guys. Exactly why they call it. Well that. done. All right. Well, let's move into as we uh, consume this. I one. like that a lot. This. This. Is so Me good. too. It's one of my favorites. Uh, of the evening, so okay. Uh, side note, uh, we've got the the no paddle IPA, mm-hmm. right? And then we've got the the Dagon IPA, right? Mm-hmm. And then we've got the uh, F five. Did you guys see any similarities there? All green. Uh, they're all green. green. <laughs> well, all green cans. And a lot green of, and black. I would I would say a lot of breweries choose green for IPA. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's because kind of their color choice. Heavy hops. Hops are green. Gotcha. So, makes sense. That's that's my anyway, theory. Anyway. I just looked over here. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of green going on over here. Yeah. yeah. A lot of jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I see where you're going. Yeah. yeah. Ba-dum, ba-dum. Yep. So anyway, uh, let's get into some uh, cons. Yes. All right. The so, cons after the hour marker. Love mm-hmm. it. Yep. Um, hacking was one of my... Hackability right at the top. <laughs> the very <laughs> first one. Yep. For, yep. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the problem is... What happens when hackers start hacking? Uh, let's just say they get into a mass transit system, right? And all cars are automated, and so they hack into nineteen cars. Boop! Traffic jam. Done. The thing I would say to that is they can do it now. Robbing a bank. With Stop the, traffic. I get out the other way. Done. The the cars today. There are no safety features on that on um on keeping people out of the code. For cars today, which hasn't been a problem, I really haven't seen it in the news. Exactly, right. bingo. So, I mean, I, I put mean, hacking <clears throat> on there as a con because it is a con. But yeah. the reality is, do we see that today? No. Well, and can we? I mean, after the first one, do we figure it out? React? Adjust? Well, and that's you know. the thing. Once we have autonomous cars, I'm pretty sure the car companies are going to go. Hey, you know, we haven't done it in the past, but maybe we should have some safety parameters, right. encrypted in code. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm yeah. guessing when they get to that point, and he's I got would, a 15 digit uh, code, man. That's like, you know, what was we, it Thomas Crown Affair? <clears throat> we have a, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we have we have a friend that that was here the last time I joined and is in computer security stuff. Yeah, 
and 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 some of the folks Mike, that people, were people know Mike. Mike yeah, Mike. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> some regular on the show. There you yeah. go. Uh, some folks in his industry discourage the uh, the, the nest because oh, at yeah. first it was very hackable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crank your heat up to so 100. what? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you want to know my yeah. energy stat? Like, well, his now so people, people now like my car. People are like they crank up the heat. Well, just go over to your AC downstairs and click the button and turn right. it off. No, now that. my car yeah, killed me. That's that's a bad thing. Or or set up this traffic jam to set up uh, something else nefarious. Sure, but they're gonna. Are there going to be isolated instances? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, and then take this one step further. Go like Tesla. All, overnight, you get a download, and all of a sudden, your product you already have is better. Mm-hmm. I guarantee that's going to happen on every oh, single yeah. one. Oh, yeah, updates to your car, yeah. just like you do to your phone. Exactly. Well, uh, uh, Google was saying that um, over uh, six years that they've had the autonomous cars, uh, it's been in 11 crashes. And people are like, okay, well, it's been 11 crashes over six years. But then Google took that statement and said well it was more just small fender benders um and a lot of them were just because the car behind them ran into them so it's kind of like you know and i think three of those 11 were because the human driver actually took control yeah yep that too <laughs> so yeah yeah um so, so that gets into responsibility that would be a con what who's responsible for this and that's where we move into your territory <laughs> there, Grant. <laughs> Insuring so, a self-driving car. What are your thoughts on that? Somebody. Yeah. I Which? Mean, what is it? Who is? <clears throat> is it the car manufacturer? Yeah, is you, it the programmer of the data that or the uh, the the, the do AI you insure unit? Google? No, it's. And it's, then you just pay at your Google account. It's the gonna, person that owns it. It's going to be a combination. So the, yes. So first of all, the laws can change, so we can adapt and and whatnot. But in short, as we as we you're insuring the, a computer as we at this first evolution uh, have. I'm going to pick on Tesla because they're going to be one of the first with... with they, they've already got... Right. And they've already had an accident, too, but that was kind of... So, yeah. so yeah. you own the car. You're responsible for the car. It doesn't change anything about the titling of a car, any of that. So as that changes, could that person say, wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You made me a, not only a brand promise, but you made me a contractual promise, mm-hmm. and therefore I'm going to sue you or... Remember, you've paid me to be your person, so that's part of insurance. You've transferred your risk to me. So now you, your car kills somebody, and I never kill people in my story, so I shouldn't do it here. Mm-hmm. So now somebody is injured, is injured, <laughs> right? And uh, and I, I'll pay it at front, but I want to get my quarter million back or my hundred thousand back or whatever you had paid me to to write a check for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bat. And then so what? What if I came back and let's let's say yeah. I was the I was the owner of that car in yep. the accident yep. and that actually hit somebody yep. and injured them. Yep. And I and said, I was on my phone at the time, so I wasn't yep. even paying attention or but, drinking. But I was in autonomous sure. mode. Right. Yep. Yeah. So why are you penalizing me? Is it because it's my car? No, I, and we probably will. I mean, I, I I again I can't speak for me, but. You can't speak for saying, the insurance yeah. company. These are, these are, I can speak for me. I guess these are hypotheticals insurance. because we haven't even right. entered Absolutely. that territory but, yet. But so. I would, I would guess that yes, it's just like so. We have today a, a, a modification, a rider to your policy. That mm-hmm. if you if you drive for one of the Ubers, the transportation network companies, the instant that you hit X key on your phone, mm-hmm. it's recorded, right? So it's just real time snap. Now mm-hmm. the liability is transferred. It's over there. Now it comes. You're done. You're done with your drive. Now and there's it's back. a yeah. And there's a way so, to prove that yep. when you were driving, when you were not driving, yep. and, all and, that. and will you? <laughs> you were always driving. Will you? St- <laughs> no, when, no, when, no, you're, no. When you weren't driving for Uber, right? Oh, yeah, but his point. You. But now take this. <laughs> you're to, always driving. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. Take this to autonomous cars. No, you're not. You know, and, yeah. and uh, so yeah. And and here's where it's interesting. So I'm kind of selfish. I kind of want a job. I want to protect my job. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, banks are still going to worry about. Uh, hailstorms because I don't I mean maybe they're smart enough to avoid a hail I don't know maybe they will be mm. you know, maybe they'll maybe maybe those people that park their cars and I, I I'm not and maybe they'll be concerned with theft for a while I'm, yeah I'm yeah. I'm not really worried about it it's just an evolution and it as much as there is going to be transformational change and and to your points absolutely at the extremes where somebody is seriously injured fit, uh, killed those are going to be the cases that dictate the rules for all the other things. But also, it because it's computer, it is so clear mm-hmm. when, you know, let, let's go back 20, there, 30. There's no guessing in an accident. Let's go they back can, 20, 30 years. 
I sell Brian my car and like I sign this paper and he signs it and we date it and so if the accident happens after that it's your problem and my like mm -hmm. you know so we still we still have a 14 day window to kind of figure that out where if I transferred it to you you can you can tell my your insurance that or not all of that's just going to get tighter and tighter well, and tighter. Well, with that said, an autonomous car hits an autonomous car. There's so much data there. Hey There's yeah, so yeah, much yeah, data yeah, there. Yeah. But, so is this going to be something that the companies themselves, like <laughs> Google and whoever is writing code for autonomous vehicles, are they taking out different insurance policies and taking on some risk? Because if I'm not driving it, it it's my car, but I'm not driving it, and something happened with the code or it made a choice that it shouldn't have or whatever. So I've seen them, uh, I've seen companies like Google or Walmart or others get into other industries. And uh, and that's true almost of any business, right? Oh, yeah. Google's getting into power industries and self-driving cars. And um, what, what do you know? It is certainly possible that they, they get directly into competition. What is more likely in my gut, my guess is, we just modify the existing stuff. We modify the existing code. It continues mm -hmm. to work. You know, it, it becomes extremely clear when you've hit autonomous mode. Now your manufacturer is liability on the hook. liability tra transfers yep, over to them exactly. And and then oh by the way, I look at Brian's usage and I and so remember back to my thought on mm -hmm. this. Go back I to America. I can Americans. see your usage. I want to drive my stinking car yeah, when yeah. I go to my duck hunting at four o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. I want to drive mm -hmm. and. That's probably not the same thing if you live in, in Vegas, but there's somebody somebody in Vegas, they have something they want to go do and control. Well, okay. here's, here's the, you know, cars I want to drive that Lamborghini. <laughs> cars I want right. to drive it. I want to drive <laughs> it. But the problem is cars are built with the, you know, top down and driving, you know, right, cruising right, right, to right. the tunes. And the reality is the most of the usage is in commutes and bumper to bumper traffic. And it just, that is not what was built to us with these cars. So. I would say that if you if you transfer that uh, that portion of drivability, so right. on the weekends you could have some right. fun. That would be uh, which kind of leads me into another con. Yep, is um, losing the driving skill. If you have an, an autonomous vehicle, eventually you're going to lose that skill, especially if it's fully autonomous. Oh, I didn't even think that about that. That is a tremendous. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's like riding a bike. Once you, you know, go, <laughs> you, once you go five miles, you're like, oh, no, I right. got this. So you know, I will comment on that from my industry, and, mm -hmm. and that is that every, every insurance company does it slightly different. But we do know part of the reason, 16-year-olds, I go back to the brain thing, part mm -hmm. of the reason is their brains aren't as developed. Part of it is they just haven't driven as many miles as you. Would. All right. of us are in our thirties, early forties. Right. We've all driven a lot more. We know what it's like to drive in wet conditions, slick conditions. You know. Yeah. Snow's <laughs> coming. I understand you know, it's going to be a little slicker. So yeah, exactly. And so uh, yeah. Could you? No, say you're dead on. So so whereas we currently might look at a two year period or four year period as a early driver, mm -hmm. now we might look at a. We might start saying, well, you don't. You log <laughs> only a, a thousand miles or less a year. That's a negative. Yeah. You're, you are not experienced enough mm -hmm. at driving that you are actually a liability. Think about think about private passenger. Pri excuse me. Think about private uh, airplane airplane pilots. Small right. plane. Need the That's hour, where the vast the majority of accidents are and deaths are. It's not in the commercial. I mean, are there Those commercials? Those guys have the hours. They got the hours. They're the pros. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's that's interesting. That's it. That's a really interesting point. Uh, well, and so it's a little subtopic from that. Would insurance companies or uh, the DMV require, if you have an uh, autonomous vehicle, you're required to every year or every other year do a driving course, especially if you haven't maintained your X amount of hours of driving? I don't even yeah. know. I mean, do you even need to get a driver's let's, license let's, anymore? Let's go 30. No, exactly. 30 years from now, well, why? But, but those are fully autonomous vehicles. Right. So, I, I, again, I push the fast forward button. Yeah. Fast forward button? No. Why? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, you know. I mean, yes, you need especially identification, you but you don't need a driver's license yeah. if it's fully especially autonomous. Especially if you don't own Again, a car. I don't own a car. I co-own a car with, you know, I, 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 eight other people. <laughs> it's it's going to be fun. And and that's where people don't, I, I don't think we do really appreciate how much of it in the United States is dictated at our local level. What laws Nebraska puts in are going to be different. I can definitively say that. Mm -hmm. I, we can go across the road to Iowa and I may only be able to point to a single one in a in a two second period. But if you drive over there, you only need this much liability. If you drive over here, you need this much by law, mm -hmm. right? 
same thing for this. And that's state to, just state to state. That's just state to cro- state. And, and that's and crossing a river for us. Insurance really. has historically has been in, in America a state to state concept. Mm-hmm. So it, it'll be uh, it'll be fun. And so if you want your state to be at the forefront of this, you'll put in some very uh, and, and go back to that topic we talked about earlier. You're going to have states that prioritize speed, mm-hmm. and you're going to have states that prioritize green or your, uh, you know, well, efficiency. I would say, by and large, do, uh, in the research that I did with this, by and large, California was very relaxed on allowing these self-driving cars on the roads because that's that's kind of the testing grounds for almost all the vehicles, at least starting, is right. California. It, once it hits the public domain, then they're branching out to you know Austin, Texas, and Phoenix, Arizona, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Which is still funny because Detroit is still Motor City, USA. I, well, was. Mm. It was. What do we think? No, I'm I getting shot down there. Yeah, you yeah, are. I You're getting shot down. There. Yeah, I, I think I think that they left a long time ago. Once once the GM took the buyout from the government, I think that that was the decline of Detroit. Yeah. Um, Topic so, for another day. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, yes. next up would be ethical decisions. Thank you, Britt. That You're is where welcome. I wanted to go. Yeah. Um. So you, you had mentioned the I don't kill people in my stories. We're let's gonna, we're, do that. We're going to go um, there. <laughs> so let's let's put this car up against driving down a road, and there's a decision that has to be made. Whether you run over these five people over here or whether you run over that one person, it's only got two decisions to make. Or you kill the driver. Or you kill the driver. So there, there's three decisions to make. So do you kill the five, do you kill the one, or do you kill the driver? Who's, whose life is valued? And those, those are the only options. And I can't stop in time. What do I do? I have no idea if either of you are ever going to run for politics. <laughs> I'm just saying. I it, toy around with it. I, I, I'm not not gonna, that it's ever going to happen. Bingo. But it could. I mean, but it could. Eh, eh, so, eh. so, 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 I'd rather deal with the ones that have happened. And, I mean, and not to say that they can't. So it's still yeah. an extremely. You're driving in New York at 60 miles an hour. Right. Yeah. Because we're, it's a complete autonomous society. And all the cars are autonomous. And. You know, uh, it, this this car right here slams on its brakes. Well, right. this other car behind it has to go this way, killing five people, or this way, killing one, yep. or that way, mm-hmm. and you kill the driver. What yep. and Grant? So, just, so just, how does the car make that decision? Ooh. Just just to just to preface this, Grant, we aren't asking you. No, I this know. is just an ethical debate. It's a great debate. Yeah. yeah. But with that said, let's just say it takes option number two, which is just killing the one person right. and doing that. Right. Okay. Second decision. Two old people, one child. Who does it go for? Does it go for the one child, or does it go for the two old people because it knew they were old? Again, because it's gonna know all that information. You're at the wide end of the spectrum. I'm gonna go a lot closer. You know, one 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 person is still. We're in the first thirty years where we yeah. still have some non pure, uh, where we have some non uh, purely autonomous vehicles. So, but these autonomous pe- vehicles are going to know everything. No, I know. It's going to be linked up to I, Facebook, and I'm it's going to go, oh, hang, that's Roger and Cindy over hang there. Hang. So so yeah. somebody makes an error in the choice, the, the human in front. So my car has to make a choice. So its choice is I'm going to impact this car and, and likely cause this amount of medical damage to that person, mm-hmm. or I'm going to cause more damage. Fi- so it's a financial calculation. It's not even death. It's just a matter of do I do 5,000 of medical damage to somebody up there, or do I do... 15,000 of physical damage well, to the, the person here. Yeah. Holy crap. Well, I mean, that, that, was, that times that. Times I mean, it's got to be written in the code. That yeah. times a hundred and that times a hundred thousand accidents is far more interesting to me mm-hmm. in the day to day business of this because that happens every day. Well, and that mm-hmm. was that was one of the scenarios. Britt Brit had said, you know, if you hit the Would five the people car over, make the right choice. Yeah. If you hit the five people over here, or the one person over what here. What is well, the right choice? Yeah. So the, the five people, they were in the SUV. And do you hit the SUV because SUVs are larger vehicles and they have a better crash? rating than your vehicle do you chance the safety ratings on the this current vehicle and think that the driver is going to be fine all right let's let's pause this Mm -hmm. is there anywhere else in life other than now talking about turning our lives over to cars turning our 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 existence over to cars is there anywhere else we've already gone autonomous and i'm just that's an open-ended i would say that uh, the commercial airline industry is about as close as we get well yeah you hit autopilot when you're in the sky after takeoff even the pilots hit autopilot after takeoff 
I mean, yeah, they probably make some corrections or calculations or plot, but I would say... For the say, most part, the, the, the plane flies itself while yeah, it's in the air. I think that I think they land. And there's so and few... And take off. Yeah, land and take off. Yeah. Statistically, I mean, it's just such a We should a have had small, Tony here, because mm, he's actually... Interesting. Our cousin's actually a commercial pilot, so we yeah. should have had him here so he could answer that question a little better. Well, but. he's enjoying himself in yeah. uh, New Bob. York or something yeah, like New that. New York, yeah. He's in New York right now. But, uh, no, I, I would think that's about the only... Um, but okay, so one of the things that I saw on, um, you know, leaving it up to autonomous things, uh, that was a huge thing that I didn't even think about was elevators. Okay, before before the elevators that you and I know as elevators, you push the button, you go up and down, blah blah blah. Oh yeah. Okay, they had the person in the elevator that actually cranked the thing, and uh, and you had a guy in the elevator. He was in control of that elevator. It was a uh, job. Yeah. Imagine that lifestyle, and then going, there's no one in the elevator. I, I push a button and then it just takes it just control goes. and it but, just, but now yeah. elevators you can go floor five and right. it just takes you there right. exactly but that's a that was a huge shift from Joe that's controlling the elevator yeah. here Joe's um, the guy he knows when to press the to button nobody, you know, where, where to stop and to all that nobody stuff. controlling it and that's where it is truly it's not incremental change it's transformational change for the shipping company to be for the the tra- the transport the trucking company mm-hmm. to be able to say. Labor is thirty one percent of our cost. We just cut that to two. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if it was thirty one. I'm, I'm just ma- well. Yeah. I'm, I'm making it up, but yeah. sixty seven you know, right whatever, now. Whatever, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it, you know, to be able to cut that so substantially, it's going to necessitate somebody is going to make that. They're going to say, "I'm betting mm-hmm. that it's worth all of these things, all the positives, all the negatives. Sure, it's worth it. We're going. Let's do it." And you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Well, now we got to figure out. Okay, what happens? Who who writes the check when mm-hmm. this car decided? Yeah, uh, the car decided to do yeah. that. Well, and because and here, it was the best option. Yeah. yeah. That okay. So I we, can't wait we, till my sister. We, we've, my we've, sister, the computer programmer, yeah. gets sued. It, yeah. I was I was I was watching something upstairs, and and Carly was cooking, and she's like, "Are you seriously watching this?" I'm like. It's it's uh, unethical. I mean, like it is ethical. It, it, I have the decision. I'm driving down the road, and I have to make a decision of, you know, uh, I have no way of stopping. Uh, there's a child over there. There's two old people over there, um, and there's me. Do I run it into the brick wall and maybe injure myself, kill the two old people, or kill the baby? You know, and I go, oh, I'm not gonna kill a baby because it needs life in it. Maybe the two old people because they, they man, they, they've lived a good life. You know, um, can a car make that decision? Well, you can't. I well, mean, and we're we're spending too much time yeah. on this one thing. Okay, it yeah, is a huge going. dilemma. Let's keep going. Yeah, what are the other negatives? It's a huge dilemma, but let's let's move on. Uh, to let me let me ones. pause and do a shout out. If this guy's still here, he's in the industry. So, Alex, if you have thoughts on self driving cars, I'd love to hear them. Just yeah, just comment yeah, just them po- out there. Post them. We'll we'll see them. Uh, emergencies. Uh, my wife's about to have a baby. I need to get to the hospital quickly. Call an ambulance. Well, it's <laughs> slower. Yeah, it, yeah, it's slower. I mean, the the hospital's two miles away. Not, not if you have a self driving car that will right. obey all traffic. Am- yeah. Self driving ambulance. Yeah. Well, if it's a self yes, if it's a self driving ambulance, yeah. but it's got to get there. Yeah, emergency got to get to my house first. That's going to be one of the things. There's going to have to be emergency vehicles yeah. now. But that you actually, drive a little faster but, if you're but, about but, to have but, a baby. I mean, go back to the go back to the pros that I mm-hmm. I didn't think about this, but mm-hmm. I mean, think about how most times it, get, it goes right, and but every once in a while it gets stuck in the traffic jam, and mm-hmm. how many times did that those seconds matter yeah. and. I mean, that's going to get so much right. better. Well, and here, okay, so Can let's, you hit the emergency button and it goes around stuff, but then everybody's just hitting the emergency right, button. Like, right, I've yeah. got to get to work. Boop, emergency. Well, I, and even if you have... Um, uh, this is your gotta work. i got to get to work. <laughs> yeah. It's an emergency. Yeah. Even if you have emergency drivers, let's, let's just say they're dr- driven, but you have a society that's set up on vehicles that are autonomous. How do you have people that know how to drive vehicles i mean that's that's a that's going to be a huge skill that's like flying an airplane mm-hmm. that's going to be after that's going to the course well, is going to be through like that I, I i feel comfortable semi definitively saying that part that at some point people are going to lose this skill and mm-hmm. therefore they're going to be penalized because they're going to get when when they go into <laughs> manual mode oh yeah they'll go in they'll they'll become a higher risk and it'll it'll get figured out Let, let's talk about that for a second just just that moment of going from autonomous to manual especially in an emergency situation that's good. that's going to be a that's a con um right there you know how it, do you make that on. transition hold on uh 
I'm thinking of a movie, Tom Cruise, yeah. Priority Report. Min- That's minor- when I, minority. When minority. When minority said report. You're right. Sky. Priority when report. When I said Vanilla Sky, I actually meant yeah. Minority Report. Okay. Minority right. Report. Yeah. yeah. He had the ability to take over the vehicle. Right. Well, that, and yeah, uh, I drive ro- it. I Robot with Will Smith. That too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that was a whole thing. Um, that was on the ethical dilemma. Do you know why he hated robots? There was a car accident, and the robot chose to save him, the adult, when Will Smith wanted the robot to save the child in the car accident. Yeah. But the robot determined that the higher probability of survival. Because he's working for that guy, so yeah. he's like, "I want to keep him alive, so I can keep my no, job." No, it wasn't. No, he was a cop. I, you know what I'm yeah, saying? But no, yeah, that. But that was why he's he, my master. That, that's why he <laughs> what, didn't want anything autonomous. That's why he had an actual motorcycle that was like gas powered, mm-hmm. and they didn't have those. You know, that's why he didn't want the the servant that was a, a, a robot at all because he didn't trust robots at all. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, moving on. So, um, the we've already talked legal. Uh, price price is kind of an option right now. Or kind of well, a, yeah, it's economy. expensive right now. But I already told you about uh, yeah, okay. our, our friend George uh, George Holtz. Yeah, the one thousand dollar. But that's a hacker. Fix. That's I mean, yeah. Can you do that? Yes. But let's make it commercial, commercially available. That's well, the, he a, did it to his own car so, and hopped on oh, the highway with okay. it. Okay. So here's the thing. The I let's just go with what just came out. The iPhone 10. If someone said, "Hey, for a hundred bucks, I can teach you how to hack open the iPhone 10 that you just paid twelve hundred dollars for uh, and and unbreak it, and you can do all these cool things with it, but it's going to avoid the warranty." Do you want to do that on a twelve hundred dollar phone? And that's a twelve hundred. Some, some people would. Some people would, but that's a twelve hundred dollar phone. Now, now you're talking about a, like your car, which is twenty, thirty, forty thousand uh, dollars, depending on what you buy. Let's come to some of this, the safety features of cars, right? So we've talked about the rear backups, which is which is a safety feature. Mm-hmm. Parking assist. Those you still got to pay the fifteen hundred dollar. I got. I want this model versus that mm-hmm. model, or you know, whatever else. The uh, yeah, parking assist. But those the, are the commercially lady. available. However. Things. Airbags. Yeah. At some point, airbags became a tipping point. It was like, or let's go all the way back to the seatbelts. Yeah. Like, at some point, it's like, oh, well, we all have to have this. Yeah. Right? So at some point, I think with autonomy, mm-hmm. uh, autonomous vehicles, it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you don't. Get, it is like helmet. This is like motorcycle helmets. Oh, sure. Hmm. You don't get that choice anymore. Yeah. No, well, that, <laughs> and that's the. Uh... <laughs> we, we know you as an individual might not screw this up. But if we take a thousand individuals and a thousand robots, a thousand robots make a lot better decisions. Oh, well, they do, yeah, because they communicate with each other. Well, and that's the, that's kind of what I wanted at the end of the ethical the dilemma that we wanted to talk about here. What I wanted to say is that's like the extreme. But any decision, really, you're talking about full autonomy. So, whatever ethical dilemmas are well, out it's, there, it's going to operate how it's programmed. It okay, barring that, okay. The ethical dilemma, to me, it's still minuscule in comparison to removing the human equation to driving. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I I believe the co the the con, uh, the pros outweigh the cons for sure. Yeah, yeah. On this, you know, topic. Mm-hmm. Um, something you had touched on a little bit when we were talking about uh, the uh, semi truck drivers, the loss of jobs. Yep. And that that goes for taxis. That goes yep. for uh, transportation. M- transportation in general. Well, and we were talking about it. So my brother in law and I. What, what was we were off topic? What was the other job we were worried about? You know, you were you were you were talking about. Sorry. Yeah. Go. Let me intervene. Uh, with semi truck drivers, they're, they they still need somebody mm-hmm. to plug it in. Yep. They still need somebody to open up and Maintain do the it. lock. Yep. They still need mm-hmm. a guy to do that. Like. The, well, you know, then they can computerize the lock, and it's like, all right, now it's open. So what? But they, they, they need somebody to back it into the spot. I mean, there's still a need for people. I mean, this, this is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, guys. This is this is Oompa Loompas. Yeah, this is Ameri- This is American progress. This yeah. is. Uh, we're we trying to make your job safer. We can't That's what we're trying worry to do. About individual jobs, and I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I I've I, never figured out where I am on the political mm-hmm. spectrum, but protecting individual industries. Oh. We, Oh. Okay, I've got one. I got Go one for you. I got one for you. So here in this state, in this particular state, there's one that would affect us greatly: farming. Yep. Hey, farming a hundred years ago. You know how many people are in farming a hundred years ago? A lot. You know how many people are in farming Not today? Not very many. Not as many. Very, very few. Yeah. 
where did those jobs go? Did they did they just lose their jobs and went on no. government assistance? No, they got other jobs. Bingo. There's other jobs yeah, out so there. That one. I, what happened to the elevator guy? <laughs> what happened to the, the, the buggy whip guy? The buggy whip guy. We were all going to the buggy whip guy. That's where I was at. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. You know, <laughs> they made the best damn w bu- buggy whips. Uh, what was that? That was a Danny DeVito. I don't know. Oh man, that was it was a movie. We're at an hour and a half, gentlemen. I Excellent. know. All right, we it's, only got a few left. Um, turning sixteen. Uh, uh, doesn't matter anymore because mm-hmm. when you were eight years old, mom was like, "Just get in that thing; it'll take you to school." It is interesting. I mean, like we talked about being nineteen in in Wyoming or mm-hmm. whatever you get to do in Colorado. Yeah. Like, you know, the, when I was young, I cared a lot about those ages, but now I'm like, eh, we just kind of move them around. And well, and here in Nebraska, even turning sixteen is a little bit different than when you and I turned yeah. sixteen because yeah, they're like you can only have one other person in the yeah, car with you. Absolutely. If you have three you, have you be, might get pulled over. Yeah, you have to be eighteen to get a full license uh here in Nebraska. Uh, the last one that I had for cons, privacy declines. Uh because it mm-hmm. is collecting information on the people that are in the well, vehicle how much that is, one's very real. Like yeah. and I don't think we have our head around that. I don't I don't think mm-hmm. we I think we have yet to see how our internet browsing and our mobile phone usage actually impacts us because we know somebody knows about us mm-hmm. digital footprint the digital I footprint's there. i don't think we know how many people know about oh, us sure i'm right. sure mike could tell and, us <laughs> and i and i don't think we know what ways they're using that data so speaking of collecting data one weird thing happened to me today and i just went oh. so you've heard about people just talking about things like I need a new lamp. And then all of a sudden on Facebook, there's a new lamp. Bingo. That comes. We've done that. Well, here's what it is. Well, we had that happen, he, what, two weeks ago? He, here on here? Here's the weird thing. <clears throat> I was at church today, and instead of using the drum set, this guy was sitting on a box. The cajon. And it had an emblem on it. It had an emblem on it that it was an M, but there was a line, so it was like a B. It was like BM. And I'm like... I wonder what company. I'm like, what? What company actually makes that box? You thought that or said that? Thought. I I didn't say it. I never voiced my opinion about this. I just thought about the company that may be making that box. Came home from church, got on Facebook, and the third thing on my feed was that box. And I'm like, I didn't even say anything to anybody. That's crazy. I was just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting into some, that's some, uh, that is, some, that's just yeah. weird. That is so weird. Google knows your thoughts. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, they do. Yeah. That Mark Zuckerberg, he knows. He so knows those darn chemtrails, what yeah. are they putting in the chemtrails? That, no, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just well, so, so Britt and I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had mentioned, Britt had mentioned a, uh, wait. Oh, no, 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 you can't play that. Sorry. Yeah. We're going to voice yeah, that over. Yeah, yeah. We, um, I know you want to, I know you want to do that, we but we don't have the rights. Seconds. We don't have the rights. We have the rights. That was five seconds. And here's right, why fine. I did that. <laughs> right, fair enough. Don't voice that one over because yeah. I heard that from another independent artist. I was covering it and I'm sure they had the permission, but more importantly, I heard the other artist mm-hmm. and I'm th- it's somebody, somebody in the room asked. So to my, your answer to that, uh, or to my, my story to yours, who sings this? And I pull up my phone, and there it is. Right there. Right there. Yep. Like, yeah. Like, so yeah. App, and this was this happened to be Apple or uh, iTunes. Mm-hmm. iTunes had like, here's the song we're going to play for you. Well, and that's I'm like, that's getting back to my ethical decisions. Oh. Since all this information is out there, how is that car going to make that choice? It's going to get down to the precise moment of the person that's sitting inside this car has been smoking cigarettes for the past 15 years. Well, that person over there is a Fortune 500 owner of a company, and that one over there is a child. Kid. Well, you know what? I'm going to smash this car into a wall because the guy's been smoking cigarettes this whole life, and really he has nothing to live for. You know? to so it's like, you know, how does the ethical decision but, happen in a car? So here, here's the thing. Because it's going to know all that information. Here's the thing with that, though. Because it's, it's data. It's, it's not the car making Big data. It's not the car making the decision. It's the programmer that wrote the code that makes that car make that decision. All right. Okay. Fair so it's, the car is not an entity. No. Okay. It's not. It's an AI. It is a, yeah. so it's a simple AI making calculations. It was the line of code that that was written yeah. by and that person. That right there is like who is writing that code? And, and that's what's funny because yeah. my sister. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm screwing. That's right. That's all right. Um, my sister's a computer. That's programmer. why I had to go get yeah. my headphones. And, and now she's going to get sued because she's a computer programmer at Tesla. Like, 
Can you imagine that? Like, oh yeah, bizarre. Yeah, it's, it's going to come back to, and, and I know enough about that that it'll be it, it'll be the entity, not the individual program. Right. But yeah. well, well, let's move into uh, we've done the cons. Let's let's move into the future of uh, future of self driving cars. So um, it's going to make a road safer. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, we had talked about. Uh, I would assume. Are we actually going to own cars anymore? I mean, that's that's going to be a thing that where we may or may not own cars. Did you see the? Uh, I know you watched a lot of the uh, YouTube videos on self driving cars. Did, I you did. See, did you see the one with uh, the Mercedes? Mm-hmm. See, that's the one that reminded that me. That thing the, was sweet. Yeah, so. like you just you're walking out of your home and the Mercedes Benz undocks itself. No, like you were making coffee and you had it on your like you you had your cell phone. And like you like uh, just okay, go ahead and start. And you got your coffee. Yeah, and then the walked you, out the driveway. Yeah. It was right there for you. Yeah. You just walk in. Took it off its charge station. It undocked itself. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw that. Open the doors automatically for awesome. you. Yeah, and then swivel the chair so you could sit in the chair. And mm-hmm. then, do you want to sit forward? Do you want to sit backward? How do you want to? Of course, Mercedes is going to do that sort yeah. of thing. There's a conference call that you want to do. It's coming in. Do you want to talk to this? Uh, yeah. You know. Do you actually want to talk to this? Yeah. That <laughs> was. Oh God. Yeah. That that Mercedes was. No, it was all uh, cartoonish. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. real. Did you see the Chevy one? Yes. Uh, yeah, that was very another. That was very similar. Um, and that's actual. They had a. That was a prototype. That yeah. wasn't. That wasn't an automated cartoon I mean, that we were watching. The, the sky is the limit with technology. I mean, it, it's all the, on how much you want to spend on this sort of thing. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you really could. I mean, for a cool, you know, two three million dollars, mm-hmm. have the coolest thing out there. Now, for two, three million dollars, you also could have drive the coolest car out there. Yeah, but nowadays, like um, you know, Tesla. I mean, you could spend sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars on a Tesla and get that. You can uh, the twenty eighteen models of Cadillacs. They have the um, automated driving for uh, highway modes. So anything over forty five miles an hour, you can engage that. So um, and those you know run from you know forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. So it's it's becoming more of a reality for the mass consumer and i would say it's becoming more cost effective to do these things and as we progress and technology progresses and more technology gets into cars we're going to see it more and more in everyday cars so i think by the time you know what a year two three maybe so here's what here's the interesting one for me what's the iterative change and what's the transformational change the iter of cha- the iter of changes are the uh, the small sensors that you're doing. So we've got the um, we'll we'll start with the uh, the 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 rear sensors for parking, so just when, just for backing up. And I think we know those. So let's yeah. skip to the what when when do we get the transformational? What's the transformational change that's going to be the tipping point? When it becomes ubiquitous, when all vehicles that are sold have the majority of these items already in them. Yep. And now we're going to introduce uh, self-driving, like actual self-driving. Yep. Whereas you know Tesla says they're take me to work. Right. They're, they're, the the Teslas even today they say they they call it um, the um, uh, uh, autopilot, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. isn't true autopilot, honestly. But they say that you have to have your hands on the wheels to take the or at least touching the wheel to to, to monitor that. And they, uh, a lot of these cars, like Cadillac, um, they actually have sleep monitors, so they can monitor your facial expression to see if your eyes are closed or open or paying attention or whatever. So that's that's part of that. But like true automation, true yeah, I mean, my trucks have the whole stay in lane right. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the uh, th- that's what's out now. Like yeah. lane departure. There are things out there that yeah. are actually making life simpler, yeah, which is yeah. great. Lane departure and backup sensors and lane self departure. parking. And- it's like it's a plane. Yeah, <laughs> lane departure. <laughs> so I mean, all these things are out there now. But he was asking what the what the big change is going to be b- before we actually all get self driving cars. And I think that it's going to be uh, when the majority of the companies have that as an optional feature, and then. Then the government says, well, it's an optional feature. How about we just make it standard for highway speeds? Well, it, it, then, you, you, you said it. it. It becomes a government thing. Mm-hmm. And you spend, you spend $54 or, or you spend $100 a month uh, or you spend $200 a month on your car for insurance and gas and oil changes and all that stuff. You just pay us $200 a month, you know. And we'll just supply you with a car. And yeah. actually, that's a really interesting point. That you I was just up right there. me too. Oil changes and all that. How do you do automated cars? And uh, anyway, uh, that, that yeah. was different than where <laughs> yeah. I was going. Yeah. 
at some point it's become uh, so let's let's take the insurance and let's take the interest financing and let's now let's take the automation cost and increase. sometimes it feels like yeah this co-ownership thing this this public ownership yeah. like you don't own the car anymore it's nah, just, it's just 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 call it up and get me where i need to go yeah. and pick my friends up or don't pick my friends up or and that's when our taxes but start I, going up more i don't yeah. I, it's not called uber anymore it's just the car the, the car company <laughs> The CEO company. Well, and that's, you know, that's that's the thing. The car company of Nebraska. See, see, right now you have to have an Uber app or a Lyft app. And depending on who you get, you get, you get Uber or Lyft. I mean, you can be a driver for both, but, you know, they have individual apps for those. So, for Well, your car- phone. Your phone would just know that you're up. Yeah, you are awake now. You're in the shower now. You are getting ready for work, and it just pulls up in the driveway as you are walking out of Bingo. your house. Bingo. Yeah, it yeah. just knows that you're doing that. <laughs> but which, but which car company made that car, and what kind of what is how do car manufacturers look? ABC in the Manufacturing Company. And that, and that to me is the most fun of this is is that we have three gentlemen here from three very different industries, mm-hmm. um, similar backgrounds, very different industries, and there are going to be so many capitalist opportunities in the next 30 years oh, yeah. just on what we've spent the time on it's going to be oh man fun. absolutely I mean, if you were a kid today just get into yeah. this or right. get into you know it's it's just fun it's a great time to live it's a lot of progress all right well let's end it but i want to do final thoughts so Britt, let's uh let, let's just do final thoughts on w- what you think is uh what are your a, what, what is your opinion right, on right, it? And B, right, where I, 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 going? I guess where, where you're going. Uh, yeah. Final thoughts for me. Um, it's a great idea. Um, the time wasted that I spend per week just driving to and from work. Now, granted, I got, uh, I'm got i working kind of at a new place, so it's only three minutes to work now. But a, a typical drive for me would be about 15 minutes. So half an hour out of my day, every single day, seven days a w- or five days a week, let's just say that, um, it's just gone. So uh, we're, we're talking three hours uh, a week or so, uh, just gone, uh, just by driving. Um, I, I'm not answering emails. I'm not making phone calls. I am physically just driving. Um, if I can gain that back, that's just more time for me, and that's great. Uh, more time to spend with whatever. You know, if, if, if we could come to a fully autonomous society uh, where I'm to work in uh, six minutes, you know, that's six more that's that's uh if it takes me 15 minutes that's you know more time i get to stay at home and be with my wife my son and all that sort of jazz so i i foresee this being a a total plus for everything mm-hmm. uh I, I i i can't see a negative on it well uh, there, there's some hurdles but yes there are some hurdles on it and yeah. we've gone over the pros and cons and, the, and and yes i've seen the cons but the pros outweigh the cons dramatically okay. so right. uh that's where i'm at I, I i'm all for it okay grant from an insurance uh, standpoint, and, I went dual, so yeah, insurance absolutely. and personal on your side. So on the insurance side, uh, <laughs> I go back. <laughs> I go back to the fact that these things are expensive, and you're going to borrow money to buy them. And yeah. when you borrow money to buy a house, I mean, there's not a lot of liability on a house, really, com- 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 comparatively. Um, but you still got to cover it, mm-hmm. and so the industry is still going to be there. The the uh, the uh, well, the, the industry is going to be there the for your lifetime, right, for sure. Right. You know, for sure. So I, I'm not worried about that particular thing. However, how they intersect, and, and like we talked about, when you clock in or you hit that automated button or you hit the button for emergency, as we talked about going to drive your your, your mm. kiddo that's got a... I'm late. Know, oh, Ooh, I, I remember. That just, that just brought another decision, yeah. a thing into my head. Um, let's say the automated car, you've hit the automated mode, boop done you know it's an automation and then you you do you have the option of taking it off of automated mode and going into manual mode um let's say it was just about to get into an accident and you're like i could stop this and you put your foot on the brake which takes it out of autonomous mode and puts it into manual mode and that accident still happens Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's kind of like transferred it right back to you you could have gone you could have gone well that could have been avoided that car might have gone you know, it might have made the the, right. the quickest of changes, right. and that that accident may have never happened. But there, since you took yeah. it off of automated mode and put it in manual mode, and now and, you're at fault. And you guys blew my mind with some of the the research you had done. I mean, there's definitely a lot of the most extreme, and also the most banal. I mean, I, I think it's actually the most it's the most frequent small things that are actually going to. Uh, That's right. I got it over here. Got, they, they're going to change. They're going to change our world as much as the the people that die, and you know uh, those kind of things. Um, back to me personally, 
two parts. It, one is that last thought of the iterative change. The the little stuff is super cool, super fun. You know, some people are going to buy it. Mm-hmm. Early adopters, it's going to cost more, but then costs are going come down. That's all fun. But when it gets to be transformational, you know, you just hey, take me to work, or hey, I'm going to co-own a car with my buddy because it's going to come drop him off, pick me up, like. That's where it's like, woo, and it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go back in the history of America, you well, go back in the history of, of modern world, it has happened. Yeah. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of jobs lost. And so that's where I, I come to the economic part of it. That's I don't know why. That's what I get geeked out on. But there's going to be a lot of jobs lost and a lot of new jobs and a lot of new markets mm-hmm. created. And that's going to be fun. So where, where people I wor- are going to kill it. Yeah, where I work, there's always somebody coming or going. Yep. In, in a big facility where I work, yeah. there's always somebody coming or going. So as soon as I arrive, they're potentially in within a minute or two, someone is leaving. Boom. You know, hop so. in their car. Hop in, hop, hop, hop hop in, in the state. Hop in the Nebraska state car. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Brian, final thoughts. I have um, I've always been excited about the self driving cars ever since you know when I was a kid watching Knight Rider and uh, <laughs> well, we're back we're like, like, like it around like <laughs> seriously like that w- that is what sparked like can I and th- that's going to be a whole nother topic or a whole nother issue with self driving cars because we, we well not, you're going to have to get over owning your own car it's you know okay, well, that it, you know right. get over it you're not going to buy a car well I'm I'm actually okay with that. I don't have to buy another yeah. car. You don't have to pay me insurance. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. But, here, but here's the, here's the thing: <laughs> how how uh, personable do you want these AI units that are driving your cars to be? Can I get? Do in you the want co- them to say good morning to you when you walk in? Good morning, Brit. Yeah. You know, hey, Brit. I'm okay good, with that as, because you're picking as, me up. You yeah, know. Good. As, so, uh, how personable do you want this to be? And then that at least you don't have to get in with a rude taxi driver anymore. No. Uh, do you remember Total Recall? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. That, that, that was <laughs> he rips them out. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So I I am totally for self driving cars, especially being the father of two daughters, uh, one of which does not have a lot of great body awareness and uh, would love to see self driving cars by the time she turns sixteen. So I'm I'm kind of hopeful for that because I would love her to safely get from here to there. Absolutely, you know, and that that uh, that whole oh man that that just brings up a whole nother like high school like uh, if everybody's driving self driving cars. I mean that's just well, so if, 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 if we had a self driving bus, you know, yeah. you'd be like. Put that kid on that bus. It's going to be so, just fine. It's there, no big deal. But there have been iterative changes. So when you talked about when we were kids, mm-hmm. when we were kids, when you turned 15, 16, when mm-hmm. we turned – somebody turned 16. I was excited. The first person to turn 16, we talked about the like, – They oh, piled eight people in <laughs> I there. know, right? Yeah. yeah right. And now, 2017, you can't do that. No, no anymore. You can have one or you're illegal and that's going to mm-hmm. – and so you hide the other kid, you know. But well, now get turn, down in the back. You're not right, covering I, them. I, I actually don't know that and I, certainly I don't endorse – that back to my jo- <laughs> my day job but you know it's happening but but and i mean now, it's just that it right now it's the iterative change you know and, and that's that's fun well now turning uh you know in the future in it five let's say five because really by 2020 then when i have a lot of this out um you know in five years within five years three to five years uh turning 16 is going to be like well I, I, okay i turned 16 week I've been, I've been, uh, my mom and dad have been shuttling me in self-driving cars for the last three years. So what is, what is turning 16 to me? Uh, I'm going to get another, get in another 16 or a uh, self-driving car. Yep. Mm-hmm. whoop de doo Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> but that's what they know. You oh know, boy. that's what they're going to yeah. know. Yeah. Why? I mean, like you said, we're not even going to have driver's license because we're not going to drive. Yeah. At some point. You'll have identification You'll, license or a passport. Yep. One of the two. But then that gets into um, like emergency people driving um, ambulances and police cars and all that stuff. There's going to have to be people that know how to drive um, because there's going to have to be ones that are able to break the rules because of emergency situations. So that's cool. Yep. Um, anyway, <laughs> cool that future. Yeah. yeah oh right. yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm ready for it. So, um, I want to thank you for joining us. This has been an episode of drink talk. We've been talking on it's really exciting. Cars. I, it was I, a lot of fun. I almost went, uh, should we do a second part on this? But yeah, no. I think we covered everything. I think we did. Well, yeah, we job. covered yeah. it all, but, yeah. but I think if we, come not back, all, if most, we, well, we all. covered a lot. If we come back in 24 or 36 months, I think we have a very different conversation. Oh, I yeah. think it's moving that fast. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, I totally agree with that. So maybe we do. Need yeah. To when you that. buy a computer now, it's outdated the day you buy it. Season two. We're gonna, <laughs> go. We've already got a season two topic. So we need to come and revisit self-driving cars. So. Hot diggity dog. Yep. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we've been talking on self-driving cars. Uh, we've been drinking on 
on several different IPAs. Uh, so. No Paddle IPA. Yep. yep. Daggone IPA. Better. And F5. F5. Also All very right. good. Uh, All very good IPAs. Local-ish um, in the Midwest here. <laughs> in so. the United States. <laughs> no, well, we've got Texas, Oklahoma, and Omaha. Oh, yeah. So. All right. So in the Midwest. 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 Yeah. Perfect. So uh, my name's Brian. I'm Brett. And I'm Grant. Thank you for joining us. All right. Facebook Live, we love you, but we're out. <laughs>